Ladies and gents, welcome to the second semi-final of Masters of Arena 7. Casted the first semi with the host, John Slow. Had a good time. We're going to cast this one solo, not with Slow. Okay, that was bad. Uh, Vinchester playing as the Dravidians here in the red. Then we have Veleza playing as the Incas in the blue. What makes this draft system unique in Masters of Arena is every series has a long list of bands that happens before the picks, and it's randomized. So some of the civilizations that were available for previous series were not available here. Dravidians being one of them. Um, both players kind of opening up what could be a long best of seven with uh, their mid-tier picks. Oh, this is bad. Vinch needs to send those to back to wood. There you go. And I was just saying that I think that this is a dream matchup for the Dravidians. Because their Dravidians don't have as good... They don't have knights, right? But... All the Eagle civilizations, Incas, Mayans, and Aztecs, they have great counters to knights. Uh, they have great monks, usually, and they have good halbs um, you know, as, as counters to it. So, you don't really want to have knights. So, not having knights isn't really a big deal here. And when you think of what Incas are good at, they're good at eagles. Dravidians have really good infantry, like the Yurumi swordsman, which is strong, but then they're champions, which can ignore armor. And then, apart from that, they have amazing skirmishers. And skirmishers fire faster for the Dravidians. Can be fantastic against the archer or slinger or even skirmisher options from the Incas. The one weakness I think the Dravidians could potentially have would be against Onager. I don't know if someone could tell me if Dravidians have uh, good monks or not. Tell me if they have redemption. I don't think Dravidians do have redemption, so I could see something like Hal Onager still working pretty well. Um, but then again, Dravidians get Bombard Cannons, so they can just snipe the Onagers with that. I think you can argue that the Dravidians also have slightly better eco than the Incas, because they get plus 200 wood when they arrive to each age. Incas do have the Llama, I guess, and their houses get more pop space, so there's some flexibility there. So, we'll see. But we're hanging out. <clears throat> T90, just name your daughter Lorena. No, that would be confusing, man. That would be confusing. And then, you know, the downside is, is I would have to have a child for that to be, be true. And I don't... Everyone always says, you say it now, but I don't I don't think we have uh, many plans for that. Not anytime soon. We'll see. Um, I wonder what she thought of everyone in Heidelberg calling her Lorena. Okay, let me just give context here so people who are watching on YouTube know what the crap we're talking about. So, basically, my fiancé... Should I tell the whole Lorena thing? Let me tell the whole Lorena thing. Okay, so, like, many years ago, so like four-ish, five years ago or something, um, I was streaming, right? Shocker. And uh, there's a way to donate if you wish to. And if you donate via Streamlabs, you can have... Uh, you could change your name, right? So if you wanted to donate, you could make your name be Billy Bob Jr. 35, okay? Donate, and I'll be like, yo, Billy Bob Jr., thank you very much for the donation. Something like that. And so we're, it was a community game Friday, so everyone's kind of like high energy, little trolly. Some viewers probably got some beers. One viewer had one too many beers, and the the donation was Lorena, and it was like kind of like sort of kind of hitting on me. It was weird. I don't remember what it was, but I just made a joke. I was like, well, you know, I appreciate the support, but, you know, not that much. You know, probably a joke like that was made. And then there was, like, another dono. Another $5 here, there. And it was funny. People were, thought it was a good time, and it kind of added to the content for, you know, that hour. But then other people started to do the same thing. So it was just, like, all these, like, Lorena donations coming in. Like, it was one person, but really I found out it was multiple, right? So it just turned into a thing, okay? So it's just weird. You know, it's it's weird that this is normal, but it's what happened. Now, when I had started dating my now fiance, I, you know, I'm not the most popular person ever, but like I really, I try and be respectful of people who are in my life because I have a public image. And I was like, well, I don't want to, you know, have them deal with any random people messaging her asking to help get rigged into community games or uh, you know, sending her game submissions for me to cast because I didn't respond to their emails or, you know, the worst possible scenario you can imagine. Whatever it may be, I just didn't want that. So I was 
there was that aspect. And then also, I didn't want to tell thousands of people I was dating somebody. Because if it doesn't work out, then it's like, okay, I got to explain to, like, I may feel obligated to explain details to viewers. I was like, no, I don't want that. So, it worked out because I was kind of keeping everything silent, you know, from my viewers and whatnot. And so, I just ended up saying, uh, yeah, guys, I got to head off. I'm going to go hang out with Lorena. And then people thought it was a joke because the Lorena thing was a joke. And they were like, ha, what a nerd. He doesn't know a girl. They're just like, you know, that's funny. And then just left it at that. So for months and months, it's just like, yep, going to Lorena's house, going out to eat with Lorena, blah, blah. And long story short, that's what the community kind of knows her as right now, but that's not her name. So there is like a Lorena account on like Twitter and Instagram, which we made. But hard to maintain those things, obviously. Plus, she's not in, in love with the social media game. Neither am I, to be fair. So, I don't know how we started talking about this. Someone was mentioning Lorena, and I was talking about it and figured I'd add context. Leza dropped the barracks here, and typically, guys, you're going to see double barracks eagle production uh, against the light cap play. But, again, the, the thing is that's important to mention here, even though Dravidians have a weak stable, all they really want here is light cap. So you can do this. And getting that plus 200 wood when you arrive to the next stage is going to allow you to seed more farms or drop the town center or the monastery. All that stuff's very nice for the Dravidians. I think the Ika will flow quite nicely here. Someone had asked what she thought of being called Lorena at Red Bull. Oh, yes, that's what it was. Um, I mean, she didn't... I guess it was considered normal. Like, she didn't bring up that it was weird or anything. I don't know. I never really asked her about it. But, yeah, I guess I guess that makes sense. <laughs> It'd be a, kind of an awkward thing for her. Second TC will come up eventually for Veleza, but I think both players will prioritize that monastery first. You also need to make sure that you're spending wood on enough farms to be able to support the food production of everything before you drop the TCs. And I think Vinchester's going to love the fact that he's seeing all this infantry right up against his walls here. And he hits the next stage. Or, sorry, Veleza does. But Veleza loses the eagle. And the spear should die as well. Veleza will try and kill the weak one here because he knows the spearman is destined to die. This is very sloppy to toss away numbers like this. Yeah, that was huge start for Vinchester. That's before the light cab upgrade as well. And look at this. Bringing these villagers here. He's probably going to make the monastery though, right? Monastery... TC and Monastery. Wow. Both things. Notice Veleza has not added the second barracks. He's opting for the town center. So he's going to have slightly less military control in the middle, and he won't even have a uh, Monastery up to be able to get relics, which is kind of the point of this. But of course, if you kill all the scouts here, you can always get relics later. She said she likes cheese. Dude, I feel like, is there anyone out there that doesn't like cheese? I know there's people who can't handle cheese, right? Like, they, unfortunately, they may have some health issues with it. But, like, there's so many different types of cheese. There's no one, I, I don't want to say no one in existence because that's probably false. But very few people just hate all cheese. Cheese is so diverse, man. Okay, light cab upgrade in. Pikeman upgrade in for Veleza as well, but light cab are faster. So Vinchester can choose one to take the fights. You don't like unmelted cheese? Okay, but you like cheese. Dave says, I hate cheese. Really? You don't like pizza? You don't like a sandwich with a slice of cheese on it? A sub? Like, dude, there's so many things which can incorporate cheese. I don't trust anyone who doesn't like cheese. Well, Var Varian, that's coming from you, and no one can trust you in community games. So I think there's there's reasons on either side for people not to be trusted here. A monk trying to move out here. He, he has to be very careful not to trip over his cloak. See how high he lifts his legs? A very important aspect that no one really thinks of, but these monks actually lift their legs a little higher than the standard monks. Because they're old, man. They get a toe caught in that thing. They're they're dot, they're dead. Light calves showing up. Now Monk's got to worry about these angry horsemen. 
And great blocking here from Veleza. There's lots of pointy sticks there. Monk, can he get it? He dies. But it's actually worth it because uh, two light calf died, so that's not bad. Your eagles are going to die, though, and that monk's like, let me get that relic. Overall, not too bad for Veleza, the fact he's able to get that. And actually, the relics generated really close to him. Probably my one critique of Masters of Arena is the relic generations have not been very fair at times. This one is pretty bad. The other relic was, well, I guess here. Yeah, I don't know. I Actually, I would have to revisit it, and it's fine. Lightcab trying to split around the pikes. And yet again, the Lightcab find kills, but two Lightcab have to die to kill a monk. So that's been how this has gone thus far. Mm. Where's the best pizza you had? The best pizza I've ever had is in my childhood town. It's genuinely very good. It's probably on nostalgia for me, but dude, that pizza place is baller. And it's been amazing ever since. Like, it's had the same ownership since I was a kid, so they never changed anything, which is rare for a lot of places. And it's just like, you know, it's just simple, tiny town pizza place pizza. But I think it's nostalgia for me. It probably is not the best pizza I've ever had, but that was the first thing that came to mind. Man, Velez has done a great job to protect his monks. He really has done an incredible job at it. He's going to get relic number two. And like Cav, try to follow in, but no. And quite a few like have died. There's only three now for Vinchester, so I think he's just going to be happy. He's going to get this relic. And he's going to try and use the light cap that he has to deny this one from Veleza. But notice Vinchester is on stone, guys. So that was a calculated placement from him to have that third TC on stone. And the same thing happened for Veleza as well, which is interesting. Where is that place? Dude, you're near my hometown, but you're not in my hometown. The place is called Dolphin Pizza. D-A-U-P-H-I-N-P-I-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z Obviously, you know the spelling of pizza. It is kind of right off the highway, so you could stop by. Not going to impress you from the outside, man, but their pizza's solid. My dad actually, so my parents don't live in that town anymore because they, they moved to uh, a new home this past year, which makes me very sad because they were at the other house for 45 years. Anyways, I'm, I'm over it. Um, my dad loves their bread for his sandwiches. And he drives all the way there. Is the only place that he gets bread. <laughs> he's retired now. So, you know, he's got no nothing else to do. <laughs> so he drives like 40 minutes to go get like 12 loaves of bread for his sandwiches. Because it's the only bread he's ever had. Man at arms now for Vinchester. Interesting. So he is scared about the eagles and the pikes, and what he desperately wants is he wants a forward castle. So we'll probably see the longsword upgrade as well. I pulled cheese off pizza and put the toppings back? Okay, you can... You can leave. Like half might get converted if these monks will allow any longer. Vinchester trying to find an area to get the kills. And he'll be very happy with that, because he didn't want his longswords to be converted. He doesn't care about the light cab anymore. Now he could move out with even just like five long swords and deny all this easily and then drop that castle forward. However, this whole process has slowed down his imp time. And he's going to try and go for a forward castle against a player who's already going to be an imp. And Velez is still leaving his base with no loom, which is pretty crazy. I think Velez can be happy to just drop his own castle here. He doesn't know Vinchester's imp time, but you have to hope. Oh, wow. He's actually he was, could, could hit some villagers here, too. No loom for Vinch. Oh, this is really good for Veleza. It's not bad for Vinch. I think Veleza will still have, you know, to be creative to counter the Dravidians. But he's killed uh, two Vils. And the castle for Vinchester and the imp timing is not going to be as good as, as things are going to be for him. And now he's starting to make the Slingers. And Slingers are fantastic against infantry. Monk also gets a conversion there. And maybe you just delete these units now. Oh, wow. Never mind. Fast conversions. 
So what you would want here is you would want to be getting fletching and upgrades for uh, skirmishers if you are Vinchester. You also would want a university, which he already has. Even getting masonry for more HP on his buildings. And masonry uh, should be followed by chemistry so you can make cannons. And that can help you when you're behind in the trebor. But chemistry still takes a while to complete, so... Yeah, Vinchester did get this last relic. He got three, so I guess Veleza, we should maybe be critical of him for not heading out there. Do notice it's three to two for Vinch on relics. But Vil count is all Veleza right now. He's got a 20 villager lead, and he has more of every resource collected. And that's the thing about Veleza, guys. It's like, Vinchester was able to kill Doubt with a lot of epic timings. And Vinchester is a, a great technical timing player. But Veleza is so clean and crisp with his macro. He never falters. 90 seconds of TC idle time amongst everything that's happened here. Good timing on a lot of these upgrades and a good read on the situation here to go double castle. I think in the end, Vinchester's going to have to give up in this area. But I'm concerned that he's dropping the ranges here because if you lose this area, which I believe he will, then you could lose the ranges as well. It's cheap for Incas to make castles. And then... Once this castle's gone, oh, it's even worse for Vinch because Vinch is going to repair it. So he's sinking more stone into this. Once this castle's gone, you could take all this stone. Monks going for kills on Yurumi Swordsman. Or conversion, rather. Oh, Vinch deleted that guy. <laughs> uh, and the monk is going to survive. Wow, what a save. The value. Chemistry still a minute out. Vinch knows, though, that he's not going to win the Trevor, so he's just going to get Conscription and hope that he can get that so he can produce units a bit faster. I think Veleza will get Conscription here in a second because he'll realize he's going to take this castle out. And he sees Skirms now as well. Guys, this is such a big play. Okay, what would you do? Try and answer as quick as you can. What would you do? Your opponent's going Skirmishers. So you know it's going to be Skirmisher and it's going to be... Um, uh, two-handed swordsman. I'm just gonna assume what people are gonna say. People are gonna say, oh, well, I go eagles then. I need eagles versus skirms. Watch what Veleza does. Notice he's not dropping barracks. He's still just dropping farms with his wood. And he's thinking that I've already committed to ranged upgrades. Right? To benefit my slingers. I'm just gonna match his skirms. He doesn't tech switch yet because trying to go for a tool... Full tech switch is sometimes risky when you haven't maxed out on upgrades with one unit line. So he goes, okay, I'll just... There's no way he could stop this castle easily. Wow, I'm complimenting him. He might actually lose this castle. But he just says, I'll go for my own skirms with a mix of slingers for now. A couple cameos here or there could be helpful. But I really like this decision to not try and drop a bunch of barracks. And slinger obviously could be fantastic. Uh, or sorry, uh, Cameo can obviously be fantastic, and he's going to need the castles for that. Vinch has Skirms with full attack upgrades. He has his cannons. And he's attacking this castle here. We'll see if he can hold this position. But again, Vinchester made a lot of these buildings up towards the front. And it's it might be game over for him, actually, because the timing has just not worked out for him at all. We have more ranges from Veleza. Look at the production. Guys, the last minute they've been producing 100% of the time. He's been all over the production. Vinchester's would probably be similar, to be honest, yeah. But you kind of threw everything forward here for Vinchester. You double committed here because you made a lot of your buildings in this area. And Vinch might have the superior skirmishers, but there's just more skirmishers for Veleza. And once you clear this, then it's tech switch time. Really nice play. And now he's starting to get those upgrades. Will it be Kamiyuk? Seems like it. He's producing more. He did lose a relic here. He's, he's going to uh, be grabbing that, putting in another monastery here in a second. The skirms are doing work, though, for, for Vinchester. Like, the few skirmishers he does have seem to do a lot. I will say that. That's pretty nice for him. 
And he's got the three relics. He's falling back with more archer ranges now. Falling back with the castle here. Can't mine any more stone. And there's so much neutral stone and gold in the middle that Velez can dig. So you've got to think that from here, Velez is going to be able to get to 200 pop and have elite upgrades and have all the blacksmith upgrades. I would actually love to see Seedram here. I, I imagine he's probably going to put the majority of his wood into some farms right now, but like... Or more archer ranges, but... I think Seedram would be a really nice move here. I don't know if there's much you can do to stop Seedrams. Vinch is an amazing player. He plays ridiculously well. Velez is just a machine. Like... <laughs> He, he defends from the initial push, and he just steamrolls across the map. Look at his pop. So good. Or as I like to call him, the finisher. Which is actually something that I came up with during the Vinchester Veleza set in Titans League Season 1 Finals. Someone made a meme. It, they, they, uh... They, like, photoshopped uh, Veleza as the Terminator. This is pretty good. It's so tough, man. When you lose all those buildings and all that time, and you've, you've had a couple bad fights, it's so tough to recover against a better player. Or, not a better player, sorry. Against a similar skilled player. Vinchester's going to have a lot to say about that better player mistake I just made. Should be over from here. And you can make skirmishers, but there's just more skirmishers from Veleza. He's getting elite Kamiok now. These things will be fully armored. If any swordsmen come out, the Kamioks will do pretty decently against that, but there's always slingers behind with shred infantry. The Trebs have pushed forward with no problems whatsoever to take out buildings, and we have a classic castle creep from Veleza. It probably won't stop there. He will castle here to secure this area. He could castle here next. And just like that, this game is over. And this is why many people have Veleza as their favorite, because he just is... He's just so consistent. His timings are so good. Initially, it looked really good for Vinchester. But it was the micro in the middle that was good for Vinchester. The economy was always better for Veleza. At Vinchester, he had the right idea to try and go longswords into control. But Imperial Age was already on the way for his opponent. Um, the Pierce Armor is not that insane on the cameo, right? What's it go to after Fabric Shields? He's getting that now. Six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I wouldn't... I, I guess I wouldn't say that's insane, right? Like, champions even get six Pierce Armor. So, I, I don't consider that insane, but you could consider that insane for the... Uh, for what other applications the unit has and how the how good the unit is in other situations. First game of our series here. Vinchester was going to reboom. He just calls the GG and he's probably like, whoa. Because against Doubt, he was able to get those timings. He was able to push. He was the one who was dominating that series. Vinchester does not get the win. Veleza does and Veleza played so smooth. That's Veleza for you. If, like, this was a Hidden Cup Arena tournament, you're trying to guess who the players are, you don't see anything super-duper fancy, just super solid all the time on timings, upgrades, and production. I incredible player. He's top 10 in the world because he is so freaking smooth. It's just, like, one castle defense into the right army, trebs this down. This castle, this castle, this castle just moves right across the map. So, Vinchester's going to have to try and break him here. And uh, maybe that's more extreme aggression, or maybe he needs a better read in the situation. Because I, I think he was expecting his imp time to at least be even with Veleza, and then the Bombard Cannons could maybe save him. All right, so we are here. Game number two. Apologies for the speed up. We've got the Slavs for Vinchester, a really good late game sieve. And we've got the Sicilians for Veleza, another really good late game sieve. And I made a statement to John Slow in the first semifinal and in some of my casts well before that. I think the best games on Arena come when neither civilization gets Bombard Cannon. This could be great. We could have lots of Siege Onagers. We could have lots of Siege Rams and a whole lot of infantry here. Neither civilization really has good Arbalest either. I feel like I favor the Slavs here, right? 
Because it's a lot of infantry siege and eco from both. Um, I'd be curious to see if the sergeant comes out, though. The sergeant's a really good unique unit. The boyar, though, should shred the sergeant. It's just that the boyar is more expensive. So, anyways, they're going fast castle. Okay, so someone told me that they visited the Pennsylvania State Capitol a couple years ago, and it was cool. Story time. So, here is a photo of the Pennsylvania Capitol building. That's a big building, right? And right at the top, there's a little... Well, actually, not a little. It's a really gold, big gold statue. I touched that, guys. Now, you might think that I committed a crime and I climbed the building in order to touch that. Not quite. So, basically, I was like maybe seven or eight years old, okay? And it was a Saturday. Or, actually, I don't know what day it was. I assume it was a Saturday. And my dad goes... Come on, Tristan, we're gonna go somewhere. I want to show you something. And I was like, come on, Dad, I'm watching TV. He's like, nope, get in the car. So we get in the car, and we drive to the state capitol. And at the state capitol, there was, like, a bunch of construction vehicles. And uh, near, like, the front steps was the statue that was on top of the state capitol. Um, only it was had been brought down for maintenance or something. I, I do not know why it was brought down. All I know is it was there on the ground. And around it were, like, a bunch of security dudes or, like, construction dudes, not really security. And there was a bunch of, like, do not enter tape, right? And we go up there. We're standing around it. And people would, like, showed up there to look at it because people were like, whoa, this thing, we no normally can't appreciate it because it's the top of the building. Probably just a bunch of dads, you know. And, uh... My dad's like as straight, um, the straight edge as they come. He's never gone above the speed limit. I've never heard my father swear, ever. No matter how frustrated he's ever gotten, never heard a swear word out of him. So this is really out of character for my dad. My dad looks at me, he goes, go touch it. And I was like, what? I was like, no, like there's, I, we're not supposed to. That's bad, right? He's like, you could tell everyone that you touched it. No one else has ever touched that. He's like, wouldn't that be really cool? And I was like, yeah, I guess. He's like, go touch it. He's like, you'll be fine. Go touch it. So my dad encouraged me to like duck underneath the tape, run over and just touch it and run back. <laughs> so now I can just tell people that I touched the top of the state capitol. I touched the statue up there. People were always like, you're full of crap. I'm like, yep, I did. I touched it. So, yeah. T90 live streaming his confession to a crime. I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations on touching the statue have passed. But if not, that is all just a story I made up. In case the, uh, the FBI is listening. Your, your dad's straight edge because he has kids do crimes for him? No, he just wanted me to have the experience, you know? He, he just said, like, how many other people can say that they touched that statue? He's like, maybe only, like, ten people ever. The guy who made it, and then, you know, the person who helps with the maintenance every year, but... And his crew. Yeah, he knew I wouldn't get in trouble. He knew they'd just be like, dumb kid, get away, or he'd get yelled at. Exactly. Anyway, stable for both players. I know we're all shocked. Oh my god, stable... What? And guess what? Next, they're going to add farms. What? Farms. Slav farms last longer. Or, sorry, Sicilian farms last longer, and Slav farms are faster. I feel like there's a joke to be made there. About one lasts longer and one is really fast. But we, we won't make jokes. Because, you know, we are a... I am my father's child, <clears throat> and I would not make such jokes. But in terms of what you'd prefer in an Age of Empires 2 game, I think I would prefer the farms to bring in the food faster because it, it, it allows you to afford technologies and units, which is more relevant immediately. There is a point in the game, uh, and it's mainly late cast age when your farms would normally be expiring where you have a lot more wood with the Sicilians. So actually adding the 4th and 5th town center, adding more production buildings at that stage of the game is more realistic. 
But you can already see, and that scout did not cooperate at all for Vinch. But you can already kind of see with the amount of scouts out. The difference is some of the food's making here. Vinchester's scout control in his previous series against Doubt was insane. But I'm excited to see how good it is compared to Veleza here. Because Veleza does have more speed than Doubt. But Vinch was just going off, man. It was incredible. Does that mean if I ever have a kid that I need to... I need to repeat the cycle. <laughs> Find out if they ever bring that thing down for maintenance. <laughs> uh, I swear, I have to I have to verify this with my father, but there's a part of me that thinks that he told me that like my great grandfather climbed that building when we were going up. Do you want me to text him right now? Let me text him. He's probably taking a nap. Here, let me watch the, the scouts. We are chilling because it's arena, guys. All right? Everything's very serious here. It's a big occasion. But I like to switch it up and talk about some different things. That was an interesting engagement there for Vinch. Chose to take out two spears. Hey, remember when I touched the capital statue? Good micro from both players with light cap. This is thrilling. One civs farms slower. One civ farms faster. We will have monks moving out for relics soon. Three relics are close. Just passing. Just passing. Oh, goodness. Well, that's a deadville. Okay. No loom. Vinchester did this against doubt as well. That's going to be another deadville. Ay, 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 interesting move here from Vinchester. This also could give him a moment if he sees these Lightcav to go get a Relic real quick. But he doesn't know the Lightcav are here. Now he does, so he should be moving out for a Relic now. Now he's going to lose his Lightcav, so he should just be getting Vils. I'm really surprised we didn't see Veleza get Loom instantly. It, the Doubt did the same thing. I don't know why. But Veleza did bring Lightcav out as well, just to make sure he's still accounting for the Relics. And Vinch might be hoping that's not the case because he's running around like this. Sorry, I will I will ask my dad in a second. This actually did turn up quite a bit here. So four villagers killed by Vinchester. And what he did against Doubt was he continued to run around to be a menace with a very weak light cabin. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That was amazing. <laughs> that was just incredible. Will the monk survive? Huh. The monk survives. Veleza was outside the gate converting that light cav, so then these light calves showed up, and then he came back inside the gate. The light cav came back. Veleza saves it, though. One relic apiece right now. And three town centers for both. Veleza was faster to the third town center, though. He will build that pretty quickly with Sicilians. Okay, let me finish this text. Okay. Getting all the information here. Just checked. Blessed didn't have the gold for Loom. Ah, that makes sense, actually. Because normally you would only have two on gold, and that's for constant monk production. That's a very good pickup. Thank you for finding that info. There will be two relics for Vinch. And Vinchester's adding stable number two. So he wants to make even more light cabin a big moment here. All the monks will die. It's just a matter of if conversions come in. And Vinchester doesn't lose a single light cap to a conversion. Great bounce back game for Vinchester after the loss in game one. So he already has more light cap than the opponent, but he has the potential to make even more because he's going to have the second stable. And Vinchester just wants to hold map control this whole time. Potentially go for a forward castle, but I don't think forward castle trebs is something you want to try against the Sicilians. And especially against Veleza because Veleza had really good uptime last time. Yeah, I think Veleza just got surprised that Vinchester dove like that. Like, Vinchester's so active with his army, and he's so aggressive with it. Gate opens, whoop, he's inside. Uh, monks leave the gate temporarily, whoop, the, the light cab are going in. Usually players hesitate a bit more, or at least it seems like they're hesitating more due to the fact... Like, look at this. This guy's insane. He should make light cab every game. Uh, I don't hope he doesn't have Mayans or Aztecs. <laughs> But, um, or Teutons, I guess. 
it seems like players hesitate sometimes because they're just spending time on their economy, but he's able to do the economy and the light cap production and, and micro at the same time. That is a lot of spear in there from Veleza, though. I wonder if he's going to consider the pike upgrade here. Because we have forging now from Vinchester to make the light cap he has stronger. There's still a relic over here, which Veleza would love to snag. Mm -hmm. Wait, who deleted the TC by accident? Someone said he deleted the TC by accident and had to replace. Veleza did? What? I'm looking at his stone count. That would be crazy if he did. Okay, Lightcap engaging. I mean, the Lightcap are going to own the Lightcap from Velez. It's just a matter of how many monks survive here. And I think with this many Lightcap, you can absolutely take out the Spearman too. With those upgrades, just do it. Take the fight. And wow, this is huge for Vinch. Drops a market because he doesn't actually have the stone to drop the castle yet. Oh, he deleted the TC Foundation when he went to delete the gate. Okay, so it wasn't fully completed. That makes sense. Well, that really set him behind then. <clears throat> and that chaos that Vinch has created has paid off big time. He's going to drop a castle here. He's idling all of his TCs. So he stopped producing and spending food there. And he just simply wants to get those resources for Imp. Well, Velez is going to need to defend from all this. For now, he's going to drop some stone walls, which is really nice. 100% necessary for him. And then I think Vinch should just shift focus elsewhere. With the castle fire and with the light cap. And it seems like Veleza knows what's up. Forward castle on arena normally means it's a race to imp. He does have stone back here. He can build castles faster with his sieve, but he's having to spend stone to keep these light cap away. And Vinchester making a bowie or two as well, but this is pretty interesting stuff here from Veleza to just wall behind. Just expand the arena. Ultimately, I think Vince just wants Trebs, and he's happy with four relics he'll have. He'll have re really good map control now. <clears throat> and the timings just don't seem to be all that perfect for Veleza. Having to spend more stone on walls is still a negative for him. It is the right play, but you know, that's going to hurt, and we have... A D's nuts, uh, detonates coming in for, uh, Vinchester, which replaces, I forget the percentage, I think it's like 40% of a castle stone cost with wood, so it makes your castles cheaper, it, it, cheaper on stone anyways, which obviously is more finite than wood is, and here's another castle. Didn't have to spend all the stone for it, feels good, like Cap need to move out of the way. Here we go. Vinchester says, I want this forward. I see that gold. Here we go. Ah, man. They're just, just amazing targets. Right? For your trebuchets. Castle still isn't even up for Veleza. I like the fletching upgrade, too. Add a little bit more to that castle fire. How can Veleza bring himself out of this one? Defensive castle. That's part of it. Mm. And I think you just... I don't want to say you chill from here. You obviously make trebs if you're Vinch. But... You take out the town centers, and then you just keep expanding your economy behind this. Even if you lose these two forward castles now, these castles give you so much potential for pressure. You should be able to have a better follow-up in the long run. Than whatever Velez is going to initially have. Like, Velez, I think, is going to try First Crusade. Which gives him some units instantly out of his TCs. He kind of needs instant. But he has to go for Trebs first. He just kind of seems like he's out of ideas. These are both of Velez's golds. Which he can currently take. A bit weird how these castles are not being tasked onto a wall. Initially, the castle was also tasked onto the TC, and now for some reason it's not. Okay, now they're tasked onto a wall. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. 
Yeah, I think what Vales is going to try here is he's trying to get enough traps to contest this, and then he's going to click First Crusade to save himself. But you need the TCs to get instant army. I don't think there's any way you stop this. Game one, it was pretty close, and then Velezza took advantage of some good timings and just rolled over Vinch. Game two, Vinchester had to be more creative in the ways he got here, but it was just on some crazy things here against Velezza. There, he's getting first crusade. No, <laughs> he's gonna have one TC. <laughs> uh, that's not worth it. <laughs> That's so funny, though. <laughs> that is so funny. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. He had four TCs, so it would have made sense. <laughs> oh, did he cancel it? He canceled it. Okay. And he just he just calls it GG. Well, that's just classic arena there. <laughs> uh, scores 1-1. One, one. Great execution from Vinch, though. And really interesting. He finally got that forward treb timing he wanted in the first game, and... Honestly, his light cap micro was just ridiculous. Killing the villagers apparently did force Veleza to have to rebuild the TC, which slowed Veleza down too. And just consistent control that whole time. And again, the food eco is faster for the slabs, right? So your farm's lasting longer. It does not matter if the game is somewhat aggressive. It only matters if the game is long term. So GG to Vinchester. Scores 1-1. We'll move along. Probably have quite a different Civ matchup next. Okay, here we are. Uh, Khmer versus Vietnamese, game number three, folks. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Now, Khmer are perfect for Vinchester because the you can skip certain steps and get to various aspects of the game faster. It's easier to get to Castle H. Oh, look at this farm. <laughs> uh, it's easier to get to Castle H. It's easier to add that stable because you don't need the barracks. You don't need the prerequisite buildings. Or all these different steps. So that's good for Vinch. Not to mention great food eco, which again, great for Vinch, because he has done very good things with his scouts. Beleza, he's got a civilization that I think is extremely versatile in late game. You have cheaper eco upgrades in each age uh, to work with. It, it suits him as well. Lots of really good options um, and good smooth economy. So, it's going to be a similar game, I think, where Vinchester tries to take control of the middle and dominate the middle and castle, and then tries to have a better imper early uh, Imperial Age timing. But, what should be mentioned is that Vietnamese get Bombard Cannon. Khmer do not. And Khmer just feel really awkward if they can't break into the opponent's base or, or somehow raid uh, the sides. Why is there a farm here? Well, he's Khmer. So, Khmer don't need a mill or a TC for their farms. They just can farm wherever. So this is just as efficient. I guess he got over here and realized I actually don't want to have... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to have three on wood. I just want two on wood. So he just decided to farm with her. Always looks pretty silly, but it's just as efficient at the end of the day. Hmm. Back golds is nice. I'd like to see Vinch lead his back walls. I'm sure he will. Um, stone being forward could be a concern, but I think it's actually more of a concern if Veleza has it. Yeah, look at this. This is hugely problematic because we know what Vinchester wants to do, right? He wants to go scout control, light calf control, and then forward castle. So with that being the case, I think that the way the map generation is situated right now gives Vinchester his best chance. I think you prefer to have... Actually, I mean, his gold's forward here as well. Yeah, really not the best of base layouts for Veleza, considering how Vinch likes to play. Someone had mentioned, maybe we go Pikes if we're uh, Veleza. Uh, Pikes could be decent against the light cap, but Pikes are still too slow. So I think because the Vietnamese have really good eco, I think you could also still go light cap. And I think you go light cap in combination with some spears, if you want to make a difference, because the Khmer won't have a barracks to do the same. Anyways, in game number two, I talked about that one time my dad told me to touch a uh, random monument uh, in my hometown, which is on top of a 100-foot building. I texted my dad about it. 
He saw the text, but he hasn't responded. Let me text him again. Forgot the details. Do you remember? He saw the text. My dad left me on red. What is that? I thought he loved me. We'll see. Uh, when is the video with the new Huang coming out? Uh, the new Huang video will be within the next two to three days. Um, I actually didn't put it on the workload for Hardy yet because I suck and I've been busy. But I will put it on the workload for him, and we'll get it out this week. It's really good, guys. It's really good. I hope you guys are excited about it as I am. Super unique strat. Very well thought out. And obviously with a sieve that isn't seen as good on Arabia, too. So, Wait, Huang is back? No, 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 no. So there's like a new Huang-style strategy that a player has come up with. Huang is not back, which is disappointing, but... It's a strategy that's going to shock you a little bit. It's pretty cool. But Huang, as far as I know, is is fully retired at this point. Dang, look at this castle time. Sheesh! This is honestly too fast for scouts and boom, I think. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I do not think that he can have good economy upgrades. Uh, and, and good eco flow with scouts and also a TC. I think it w may just be a, a 2TC boom for him. Look, he's not... Guys, he's not even taking any more gold. This is not for relics. This is just a boom. So it's a bit of a mind game. Vinchester is going to just drop town centers. Velez is thinking I have to make sure that I compete for the middle here. Because that's what Vinchester is really good at. Uh, are there any news on back? Is he totally gone from the game now? Uh, well, he's retired again. We were able to get him to come back for Season 2 of Titans League, and then after that, he disappeared again. So I think he's back to retirement. We did try and reach out to him uh, about Titans League Season 3, and we never heard word back. So he has been pulled, obviously, from Titans League. But life goes on. Uh, it's disappointing to see big names gone from the scene, but, uh, you know... It does make sense. Back to been like he played this game since late two thousands, I think. Ten plus year career and traveling to various lands, playing deep into tournaments, doing everything that Back did. If he is indeed finished, he had an incredible career. But I think most likely it'll be one of those deals where he's busy with work and life. Eventually, he might find interest in time to come back every now and then. I think Back's got a wife. I think he's got a kid or two, right? He's got a job, right? It's hard to prioritize time. All right. So, Velez is looking around. Let's see in the relics. Still not cast late yet. This boom's going to be insane. But you're also giving up all the relics. I like giving up all the relics because I think Kimura just worse late game anyways. And the way you win this game is with a good snowball in towards early imp. But I guess a big part of snowballing towards early imp as the Spearman holds open the gate is having map control. So you are delaying the map control. So Late 2000s, eh? Like 2990s? No, I, I think... <laughs> you know what I meant. I... <laughs> Um, maybe I could have worded that differently. But Bact was, uh, I think his career started in like 2008, 2009. Way back in the day, there was really two big teams. There was uh, Tyrant, which basically monopolized all the top talent that wasn't Chinese. And then there was SY, which was like Yo and Tim and all the big Chinese talents, some of which still play. Um, but then like... There was Tyrant Legends and Tyrant Warlords. And between Tyrant Legends and Tyrant Warlords, I think there were like 14 or 15 players. Act was one of them. So uh, he was always really good then. And like the, he came out of retirement essentially for Titans League Season 2. And he stayed up in the top league, which is crazy. It was barely playing the game and came in and maintained 
top 16 <laughs> in the uh, Titans League format, which was a great storyline for season two. If you can kill a couple monks with this starting scout, you are living the dream if you're Vinch. Because your eco is flying. Let's look at res collected. Still ahead for Veleza. But you'd expect the food count to really rise here for Vinch and the resources in general to rise because he's got three TCs and more Vils right now. Villagers take time to pay for themselves. I think at this point, Veleza will know. Oh, Monk goes down, Scout goes down. I guess that's worth it. Veleza should recognize at this point that Vinchester's just straight booming because he hasn't seen any Scouts. And now we are going to see the stable for Vinchester. So now he's going to try and add more scouts to kill more of these monks. Because, yeah, sometimes, like, it can be really bad to just give up the middle. Not because they're going to get five relics, but because the opponent only needs to make two relics. Or, sorry, two monks to get the relics. Because in an extended castle battle, they might end up needing to make eight to ten monks to get three or four relics. So it takes longer for them it to pay for themselves. But here, we're not even seeing a third monk right now for Beleza. Because he's like, why would I do that? So I think Vinch could surprise him. How did you feel back spot in Platinum? Yeah, so uh, Lan was brought up from Gold. He was the best performing player in Gold that didn't get a qualification spot. Because uh, remember, he lost in the Decider against Margugu. But he had won every single series he played and had like 11 wins or something. It was a bit brutal for him. So honestly, it ended up working out for Lan and ended up working out for us schedule-wise as well. Because I think Lan would have had issues playing in golds based on the time frame. And whoa, that's like the most useless Spearman ever. And look at Vinchester, man. Look at this. Completely surprises Veleza. Killing two monks. There's only one relic for Veleza. And, and now... Velez is like, well, crap, I was not expecting that at all. I've got to make another monk, and I've got to drop more stables now to get army. That was insane from Vinch. And, guys, he's on stone, so he's thinking about a forward castle, too. But he's got to be careful, because Velez has done the right thing to react to this by adding more stables and adding some spears and trying to get more army. Scouts are on the prowl from Vinch. Shocker. I think light cab upgrade would make sense for either player. And they both click it right after I say it because they're amazing. Two stable production here. It won't quite be three stable production here, though. Like, he doesn't have the food income to produce out of three, but he will still try. No blacksmith upgrades for either player either. Vinch is at a very smooth game here. And he maintains that 10 villager lead. Oh, man, he's committed. Oh, that's a bad fight for Vinch. He really tried to force it there. He kills the monk, though. Maybe it was good. I don't know. He's getting a relic. Only one relic for Veleza. You would have wanted to have, like, two or three at least. But he was trying to catch up on the boom, and he just assumed that he would have the time, and Vinchester's not giving him that time. Sick. Even husbandry now for Vinch, so he has faster light cap. Okay, that's that hurts a little bit. He's so aggressive with it. He knows there must be a monk over here. Meanwhile, Velez's just realized that the relic's gone. Is Vinch going to check this one? Of course he is. It's gone now. Vinchester, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. The relic's gone. It's not there. It's gone. It has left the the, the area of vision, the, the fog. The Yeah, okay. Well, he must know now. And here comes his Vils. Honestly, who cares about this relic? All you care about right now is getting your castle forward. And if you can get it all on that stone, dream scenario. But it might be a little too dreamy. All the light cav are going to converge. There's more light cav for Vinch. Oh, dude, if Vinch wins this game, this has been so sick. He's done the same thing he did in the previous game, though, where he brings the stone villagers, and then he doesn't have the stone for a castle. Guys, he's missing 12 stone for a castle. Oh, no. Oh, God, that's a bad fight. Oh, God. Oh, no. He didn't have forging yet. Oh, no. It's a throw. Vinchester, no. Oh. It's so bad. 
And now Pikeman from Valeza. He doesn't have a market, so he can't buy the stone. Oh, the monks go down. But wait, he's still here. He still got it. Get the freaking stone, dude. Okay, he's got it. Just drop it off. Boom, drop the castle. Boom. Okay, there you go. Boom, drops the castle. Wall in the vills, please. You're going to stress me out. Just please wall in the villagers. Wall them in. Okay, houses. Thank you. Okay, I can breathe now. And we have a castle from Veleza. And he's, he's converting one of the villagers here. But the monk... Okay. A uh, monk dies. Villagers reposition. Veleza is really hoping his castle denies the castle from Vinch. Vinch is imping. Remember. Vinch's castle will go up. We have zero army for Veleza. Don't open the gate! Don't open the gate! Don't open the gate, you stupid woman! Okay, it's fine. She's actually very smart. She, she paid the price with her life, but the fact that she didn't open the gate makes her not so stupid because her friends would have died as well. That was a huge moment because your instincts there is to save your unit. Um, okay, castle goes up. Rats and Archer dies. We have more Cav from Vinch. Remember, no Bomber Cannon for the Khmer, which makes it really awkward to have a good follow-up. Vietnamese do get Bomber Cannon, and that's why these Siege Workshops are prepped. That's why the University is prepped. We also have Rats and Archer production. And then Rats and Archers are going into the castle, which adds a little bit of extra firepower, as does Bod Canero, to the current castle war we have here. No, that's not me being sexist. I would have said, what are you guys doing? This guy's stupid. See, I was just going to say, I will call all the villagers stupid. What is happening? Why are these people here? Are they looking for their friend? I... Well, I don't think that was intentional, and now they're just, she's going to make an outpost, but... Okay, we got a Treb first thing here from Finch. Now, the, the other big thing here, and it's such a theme in Masters of Arena, is if you deny that stone from the other player, they're really in a pickle. So, like, this is the only stone income that Veleza can realistically have, and he's running low on it. Rats and Archers, though, could maybe deny this castle. I don't think Finch was expecting this. Red Ten Archers do lack range compared to a crossbow, though. It's only six range, which means the castle spot's arguably perfect. The Ram's coming out here from Veleza to try and take out the castle. The Treb needs to hit this castle, Vinch. Vinch is so fixated on this. Vinch, you've got to be Trebbing, my friend. And I'm not sure about opening up those walls there if you're Veleza. He seems to be panicking under this pressure. The Rams are not going to work. The light cab are going to be through. One of the two castles from Vinchester is producing trebs, but still it's two castles versus one. He's going to finish an archer range as he's thinking about some units from his archer range. He's going to aim to break through here. And Veleza does have enough stone for another castle, but where will he place it? Because we know this one's going to go down. This one's going to go down any moment now. He's going to place it all the way over here. Pikeman upgrade's coming in for Veleza, but he doesn't have the units yet. So the the timing here is really awkward for him. And, you know, the Rams, there was a world where he felt like he needed something more. This is a result of the fact that he knew he would be behind in the Trebor, and that Bomber Cannons might not be realistic. So, while it didn't work, you can fully understand why Veleza has tried it. And Vinchester is probably going to win this game just like he won the previous game. Just early Castle Age pressure. Or, or sorry, late Castle Age pressure. And just, honestly, a brilliant game. Like, this game is so much more brilliant than the previous game because he completely mind-gamed his opponent. He opted for the economy. Right when Veleza realized it was an economic choice, he switched back into the light cap. And then he turned it into a forward castle as well. Honestly, so sick. And he's already got skirms with good upgrades to come in here to help out against any rats and archers and against any pikemen. Market's down, like half can run in. I'm loving Vinchester's play here. Vinchester and Tato in their quarterfinals had some crazy mastermind plays. Spoilers, obviously, if you didn't see the first semifinal, I'll maybe mention it in another 20 seconds. But... 
Like Vinchester really showing some of that brilliance and some of that creative strategy here today as well. And I guess maybe I it, uh, been, like, kind of spoiled it regardless, but Tato was similarly as creative today. And he's awaiting the winner of this one in the final. Uh, Bombard cannons are massing. This is, it could be a big concern if they start to mass. But Vinch is going to get two of the four. And he just needs more skirm. He needs more calf. That's the plan. More skirm, more calf. Maybe there's a chance here for Velezin. Look at this. The villagers have been on stone. Worth the risk, right? You're already dying. Velez is not finished yet. But did Vinch notice that castle? Oh, he knew about the castle. Oh, that's so good. Drop a castle here and then have the Trebs right underneath it on that castle. Vinch has to be careful with this castle, though. I think you can let it go down. I think you let this one go down, but you keep the other one up and you're okay. Not entirely sure. Like have happy to sacrifice their lives for a Bombard Cannon. Vileza paying attention. But he will lose a cannon. Oof, that hurts so bad. 225 wood, 225 gold per cannon. And Vinchester choosing to repair this is looking pretty good right now. Even just crossbowmen trying. Baiting the pikes into the castle fire as he shows up here with the trebs. Yeah, there's just too much happening. Vileza can't compete with this pace. And Vinchester wins this game. This was so cool. That was amazing. Because the weakness of the Khmer play is that you give up map control, and then what are you going to do in early imp? But he had the timings perfect. His first two scouts immediately killed two monks. It was a monk killed here and a monk killed here. At that point, Vleza only had one relic. So Vinch ends up getting two relics, ends up getting the, the, the imp timing, and the Vietnamese super late game wasn't able to really happen here. That was sick. Uh, 40,000 resources collected from Vinch. 6k more uh, than Veleza. Almost exactly 6k more, actually. It's interesting numbers. And 68 to 62 KD. We will move on. Best of seven, obviously. Veleza looking to respond. But Vinchester can have more bonuses that allow him to go for... Like cat plays. He's going to dominate this series, it feels like. Game number four. Tatars versus Malians. This might actually be the first time I've ever seen this matchup on Arena. I watch a lot of games. I can, th can think of quite a few matchups with Malians being on one side and Tatars being on another. But I cannot think of Malians versus Tatars. So, should be interesting. Uh... Malians are very flexible with all their, the cost on their wood buildings. Their gold income's really nice. You got great cav and great infantry. The Tatars have good economy. A good stable units, good archer range units. So they are like a Hussar and Cav Archer civilization. And I feel like mass Cav Archers can work really well against the Tatars on this. Uh, against the Malians, sorry. Because Malian skirmishers aren't that great. And while Camel can be good against Cav Archer... Jeez, I even think, like, Tatar Halbs with Cav Archers could be good. I don't know. Still trying to think a little bit more about it. The overall flexibility is amazing for Vileza. It's so much better than what he had with Vietnamese in the previous game. So I think the ease at which he's going to be able to get to town centers and expand his economy is going to be above what's possible for Vinch. But, I mean, Tatars do get sheep from their new town centers and more food on their sheep, so that kind of helps. I think Vinch will have a really good eco for Lightcav, which has worked really well for him the last two games. Was this Vinch's last pick? Uh, it was near the end, but remember that in this tourney, there's a lot of random bans before the picks happen. So here, I'll just give you another glance at it. Look at all the red at the bottom. All the red at the bottom happens before they get to pick. So it was his last round, the Tatars and the Goths. But it just spices up the tournament because there's different matchups. You can't just expect to play, you know, three or four civilizations every single round. So we will see. Uh, gold is very far forward for Vinch here. 
I'm not a big fan of the stone spot, even though it's on the back. Like, I prefer this because you could drop a TC on the wood line and take the stone easier. This is like, you probably only want a TC. You don't even want a TC here because it can get siege push. Maybe down here. This gold is amazing, though. TC on the wood line, and then you can take the gold on the wood. Farm around the TC while still taking the gold. What do you think of random bands like this, Torny? But for a mixed map, Torny, like Titans League? Um... Well, I, I don't like it for TTL because mixed maps, it, it would... Okay, so so let me start with Arena. Okay, so John Saul may disagree. He may agree. He does say Civ win more than any other player I know. But Arena, realistically, has more Civ wins than any other map, right? There are just some tiers of civilizations which would always beat other civilizations. Because Dark Age and Feudal Age bonuses, are, they add up, but they're, you can't, there's no variation to the early play, really, in terms of what you can do, right? A more open map or a hybrid map, if you're behind, you have creative ways to come back, whether that be pressuring on land, pressuring on water. You know, there's, there's just more time periods to affect the game. So I really like this for Arena because it eliminates a lot of those really top sieves. It kind of makes it more of like a middle... And it's like slightly top tier uh, Civ tournament instead of the same rotation of five to seven Civs. My worry for a mixed map tournament would be if you're forcing players to just play out of their comfort zone for the sake of it. Uh, and it, it would eliminate the ability to like prepare and eliminate some excitements for the map. So like, for example, the map cross or four lakes produces some really fun games um japanese malians huns persians if all those civs get put on a ban list it's like okay the civs they're playing with have no bonuses for this map anymore but they just have to play with it you know but i think what's cool is like so i just don't think it's i would like it for ttl uh, but i really like it within the realm of arena because otherwise, we like we're already seeing Vinchester go like have every game. It would be way more predictable on a closed map tournament than it would be on an open map tournament. Listen, what I like is I like different events having different balance. Do you guys agree? I think that's good for the game. So, if anything, it adds to this type of drafting for me to not do it in my events because it makes it more exciting when it comes around in other events. Something, this is what I really like for my recent events. Um, I've implemented this in, I think, three of them. I really like to have the same drafting system for the group stage in the early rounds. That way, some type of a meta is established. Early on, players think they know what's good, but there's nothing's confirmed yet, and it takes time to build up on what that is. By the conclusion of the fifth round in TTL, you, you really have a strong idea on what player preferences are. And then when the yes. playoffs start, that's when we change the draft. I like to do that. Because it's like, okay, you guys figured out what was good. Beautiful building placement from Vinge, by the way. But now you have to be a little bit more creative. Now we're going to give you an extra ban. Or an extra two bans. And then that Civ that you played with the first five weeks of group stage, you might not have available anymore. You know what I mean? Anyway, stable for Vinge. This is the new arena meta that I'm seeing from people is they they like really try and utilize all the space they can and clump up their buildings. Leza still kind of does the buildings in a in a line strategy. And we're going to have stable play from both here. To be honest, if the drafting wasn't different here, I probably wouldn't watch at all. It would just be the same 6 to 10 saves again and again. Exactly. And if you see the same 6 to 10 civs again on Arena, you're seeing the same types of games. If you're seeing the same 6 to 10 civilizations on Cross, on, like, you know, more open maps, you're not... Even if it's the same civs that are opted for, you're not always seeing the same type of game because there's more variety possible. Right? But regardless, I like to see a little bit more variance, so... Mm, boom. Good pickoff. And, whoa, that scout just stopped there, which could be amazing for Vinge. Uh, did you see that? It just got stuck. 
And that's a frustrating moment there for Veleza. I think that's 100% a bug. Unit's also glitching out now here for, for Vinchester. Russell says, see, this is why I could never be good in tourneys. I'm only really good with a few sieves. And, and that... You maintain, Russell, that that's the only reason? Just because you're only good with a few sieves? Is, is that the only reason, or are there a few more as well? Guess it depends what tourneys we're talking about, man. It doesn't mean it's a high elo tourney. <laughs> so yeah, horse got stuck in the mud for Veleza. Drops his monastery. Drops his TC. It's so cheap for you to be able to drop all these buildings with his civilization. And Veleza trades his spearman there for a scout. Good pick off there from Vinch, but does lose the scout. And it is five scouts total for Vinches. He goes for husbandry. He does not go for light calf. This scout's home ready to heal up. Hmm. So, just like Kevor. Vinchester will have the faster scouts now. And a scout with husbandry is 1.71 speed. And it is 1.50 speed. For a light cab without husbandry. I think it goes up to one. What does husbandry add there? It's like it goes up. It's weird because the scouts are always faster than the light cab. I think it goes to 1.7. Which means it's 0.1 speed behind. I don't know. Anyways, th that scout could be converted. There's no conversion resistance really on a scout. Or not as much. And he gets it. Okay. Life is fair again. I think Vinch got a little too crazy there. Mm -hmm. Two TCs for Vileza. I really like how he's played it thus far. He's going to get relic number one. And we've got two TCs for Venge. Now, an issue I always have with Tatars is I'll look at my amount on food and I'm like, holy crap, my eco's insane. But a lot of that's villagers on sheep. It's really hard for me to get the timing right. I prefer bonuses that last throughout the whole game, like Malians or Franks or Teutons, you know. You don't have to get the timings right in the midst of battle and woo hoo 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 Sorry, those scouts. They gotta be careful here, man. That's good moment for Veleza so we can get more relics here. Oh, he doesn't see this relic. That should be a freebie right there. But I mean it's gonna be really hard for Vinchester to get to, so. I think I prefer Velez's position right now. He's got better army control in the middle, more potential to get relics, and I think the flexibility and long-termness of his sieve is very smooth. Vinch only has five scouts, and some of them are healing. But here he comes now. Has light cav. Again, he's checking this. I wonder if this will even tell Velez there must be a relic there. As, uh, wants to save the monk. Worth it. Worth it, worth it, worth it. I think that's... I, and I say worth it. I think that's worth it for Veleza there. The two light cav have to heal up, which takes time. You kill the light cav, and then you're able to get this. And look, he saw the light cav go that way, and now he's checking, and he's going to see that relic. That's really nice. Well, he's also going this way to try and find Vinchester, and Vinchester's trying to hide. Velez is looking, he's double checking, and oh, what great thorough play. Dang, I, I would have easily missed that there. I would have checked and then come back to the middle probably. Hmm. We do have some stone mining now for Veleza. And both players had dropped their third TC on the stone, right? This is going to be a hard one for Veleza to ever get. He just caught a glimpse of those light cap and can see that Vinchester is just going to send one light cap there. Here goes Vinch. Hoping he can snag that relic. He only has one so far. And then he comes in with the light cap here and Veleza executes so nicely to block the monk. Again, that's really nice from him. But I like how, what Vinch has done here. I think he should maybe... Yeah, yeah, look at that. He's like, okay, I gotta just snag this real quick. Don't mind me. I think he might have even taken the fight. 
No, he had the better engagement, I guess. Finch will get two relics, then just one relic remaining. But Veleza should get this one, I think. Hmm. Someone said the stream is freezing. Is anyone else having issues with that? Does Vinch notice this? Vinch, paying attention. Monk gets bopped and bopped again. Wow. I think I'm not dropping any frames. I would suggest turning off low latency, turning on low latency, refreshing any of those things. Or tell, calling your neighbor, like go, go bang on their door and say, stop using my Wi-Fi. I hear that works out really well. I yes okay Velez is learning sorry I, there's a hot key in my mouse that makes my game fly back like that Velez knows Vinch's style now he's lost to it two games in a row and so he's going to drop more stables here this is perfect reaction but maybe a little late compared to Vinch's timings and Vinch kills another monk he is forging he should be taking that fight Oh, but this monk is going for it. Go, old man. Go, 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 go. Well, it's okay. You did your job. You did your job. Uh, but Vinch is going to be the most annoying guy ever with that light cap. Especially because he has husbandry and Veleza does not. <laughs> and he also gets to see where some of the resources are. <laughs> How does Vinchester get like having the people's walls so frequently? He did it what, twice against Doubt. He's, this is the second time he's done it against Veleza now. He will run in your gate the second he gets an opportunity. And it gets great intel. And also, it looks like he lost a monk, but he gets a kill there. And he kills another monk! What? <laughs> dude. <laughs> Vinch is incredible, dude. <laughs> Finch is truly incredible. All right. Well, Imp is on the way right now for Veleza. Now, he is a civilization that has faster university upgrades. And Vinch's units were on stand ground, so that was pretty sloppy. And this, for the first time, Vinch is not going to try a forward castle here. I think trying to go for a forward castle would have been a mistake. Because the Malians can so easily go for... The Bombard Cannon defense. Tatars can't do that. Siege Workshop seems a little weird to me. I'm not sure if you accomplished too much with the Siege Workshop, honestly. And you've now shown your opponent you're going to try and go for Cav Archers, which is fine. I mean, they probably expected it anyways. But the Cav Archer transition and build-up takes time, too. And I think Velez is going to be very happy with life. Having three relics. He's in a really good position to tie up the series. Look at these houses, even. Like really cramming these buildings into one spot. I like it. Unless your opponent has siege rams. Hmm. Camels are still something you can make against cav archers. Because if you get in close to those cav archers, you eat them. The light calf from Vinch still out and about. A risky game for many, but not for Vinchester because, well, we've seen it all before. He sees more villagers, and he says, thank you very much. I'm just going to pick off your vills and move along. Just passing. Kills three vills now in this game. But he only has five cav archers. He only has one archer range. Think of all the buildings that cost wood here for Veleza. Right? Majority of his buildings have cost wood, and there's a 15% discount on that. And he's collected slightly more re resources. He's going to get chemistry, and it's in like that. It's so fast. And Vinch knows that there will be pressure, so he's going to opt for a defensive castle. I'm really concerned for Vinch right now, guys. I think we could start to see the Bombard Cannons coming out here. Varimba upgrade would add plus five attack to the camels. But Heavy Camel hasn't even been researched yet. There's still expensive upgrades to get. Oh, goodness, and units get through. And Velez is keeping it open with that camel. But he, he will just take this trade. He'll be very happy with this. He's killed some cav archers. Might not look like it's the best, but you forced your opponent back. You killed quite a few cav archers. That's worth it. Because it's all about having good timing and momentum on this attack. Yeah, that was definitely good for him. Three cav archers versus six camels now. And you have the castle going up in the middle. 
bomber cannons starting to be massed. I think Vinch... Well, this is the first time in this series that he didn't try a forward castle. And Veleza kind of expected it. So maybe that was part of it, but... We should mention Tatars... Their halbs do not get the, ca the second or third armor, so... They're the worst halbs in the game, I think. Look at the micro from Veleza, wow. But still, halbs do a lot of bonus damage. So as much as people want to be like, Tatar halbs, no, they don't get upgrades. It's better than going like pikemen with Mongols, or, you know, some Civ that just is capped out on pikemen. So I actually think Halb CA was the best composition. I mentioned that 20 minutes ago, but I I also think that you're just going to have given up so much map control to get there that this becomes problematic. Some players would continue to steamroll and go for a castle here. That's not really a Veleza thing. Veleza wants his next castle probably here, outpost down here, just vision on the whole map. Castle fire is going to be a big deal. I would like to see ballistics for Veleza. You, you got to use your castle as a weapon here. Ooh, big attack rounds, though. Doesn't Halb CA die to Champ Scarl? If it's Heavy Cav Archer, you do uh, 11 damage, and champions only have 8 Pierce Armor. So I think if you have 30, 40 Cav Archers, it, it dies pretty quickly to... Like, champions die pretty quickly to the Cav Archers. And a lot of your champions are going to be attacking Halbs, right? So the champions aren't doing any damage to the CA. So no, I think it's it's not enough Pierce Armor against Cav Archer. But, I mean, this is working out so nicely. And the Gabetto combined with the Camel is great, because you have a unit that chews up the Halbs. There's Heavy Cav Archer now. Uh, it wasn't really the prettiest of engagements overall, I think, for Blizzard, because he did lose a lot of Camels. Like, he lost more gold units there than Vinchester did. I think the composition is good. It's just costly. Normally, it's better to have one gold unit and one trash unit and then siege. Which is kind of what Vinchester would want here. But wow, Velez does force a castle down here. It's really interesting. It's not his play style, but I like it. Also, all the houses are here. <laughs> he should have done it in the back of his base. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This could be problematic. Heavy Cav Archers going for a Bombard Cannon. They're going to get one Bombard Cannon, but at what cost? Castle's going to go up anyways. Uh, I mean, it's like... I'm not so sure about that, actually. Castle? This is crazy. I would have expected that castle was going to go up and backed away so long ago. Vinch has lost... He's killed 12 villagers. He's lost zero villagers in this game. This castle secures him some extra stone and gold. Both players have just been trading there with their army so early. They haven't really had time to be able to mass big amounts here. But that Treb from Vinch is going to get taken out by the cannons. Well played, Veleza. Backs away to that castle. That's a crucial one. Said, the Cav Archers are really doing a great job. We're now going to have additional pierce armor on the, uh, or additional armor on the cav archers here. And Vinchester moving forward with confidence underneath the castle fire against bombard cannons, which are expensive units. Gets one. Is going to go in for another? The guy's crazy. He's going to get another? Oh, he gets two. There's four more, though. Five more. And Trev's from Veleza. How many ranges does Vinch have? Four, but one isn't even built yet. I think that needed to be better, but he's microing so much. Uh, sees another cannon. Goes for the cannon. Gets the cannon. Loses the trap. I think Veleza will take these trades. It, uh, I think. Because he has the extra relic, and he has his opponent under immense pressure. The second this castle's down, maybe he's able to move forward a bit more freely. It's interesting, though. The KDs could not be closer, guys. This is ridiculously close. Bill counts higher for Vinch. Vinch's micro is so good. The Halb play was a must. The, the random Halbs that are doing damage to the Camels, even just weakening the Camels, is huge. And it, there's no sign to me that we're going to see a tech switch from Veleza. 
He just wants to take out the castle. Because castles are so important in the long term. Bombard cannons showing up. Castle fire has killed 22 units. Getting Bodkin for that castle and ballistics for it was so helpful. Vinch is sinking more and more stone into repairing. He doesn't have any trebs. He's going to add Keshiks now. He wants something else in front of all this. But, I mean, this is the heart of his base right here. Now, we kind of joked about the uh, the houses earlier, but honestly, once the castle's down, all the houses start to go down, too. It will be an issue. He's about to be pop-capped already once that castle goes down. This is classic positioning versus army comp. The army comp actually seems superior for Vinchester, but the positioning is superior to uh, Veleza. And now Veleza goes for Ferimba, so that'll tack on another plus five, but it'll be plus six because Iron Casting and Ferimba's coming in. Meaning the Camels do more damage, but there's an argument the Camels are not the way to go here in the first place. I don't know what else you do. Honestly, I like the Camel. I think the Camel was good. Vinch trying to use Keshix to take out these Trebs. They're far from fully upgraded. They're just regular Castle Age Keshix, basically. But they can do the job. Push back three trebuchets. And wow! What a hold from Vinch! Now, I think... You remember I said that forcing the issue here might not be the best? I think if Veleza... I mean, he, he's fine there, okay? But if he now thinks about this and starts to look in this region... You just kind of hold this area and you start to push this. Vince should not be on these resources in my point of view. In my opinion. So, um, that, that's a big thing now. And Vinchester gets to think a little bit more about, like, maybe raiding here, which isn't castled yet. is gonna go to this stone so we can get more castles. The camels will eat these cav archers so quickly if they get in close. But almost like the Lowy the Legends do on Tuesdays. Just using the Castle Fire, baiting your opponent back into the Castle Fire consistently is so nice here. I, I I love how Vinch has played, but it's such an uphill battle for him. I don't know how he breaks Veleza right now. Particularly if Veleza gets a castle over here. Oh, man. Oh, camels. Oh, man. I think they like two shot a Cav Archer, but there's Halbs there too. Wow, we have Timurid Siegecraft coming in right now for Vinchester, will, which will allow him to make Flaming Camels and also adds range to Trebuchets, which are two very random things to combine together, but that's just what the game is. That's our situation. Still think that's a fight Veleza will be happy with. I think he wanted the range on the Trebs, though, and not Flaming Camels. Is it weird that... It does two things, and they're two entirely different things, and one talks about Siege, and the other one has flames on camels. Yes, but it is what it is. Bombard cannons trying to be sniped by the Cav Archers. Cav Archers back away. Vinch once. He's even getting Siege Engineers! He's going to have full range on the Trebs, people! Max range Treb time. Let's go! Get close to me now, Bombard cannons! Oh, God. Actually, this could be rough. There's a lot of cannons back there. Finch is pulling away the Trebs. Well, he was cheating anyways, because he was going... He deployed the Trebs before he had Siege Engineers. So now we'll have 19 range Trebs. Can you imagine if he wins this game because of 19 range Trebs? How sick would that be? He's got Halbs coming out consistently. Camels are dying. There are the Trebs. <laughs> There's also a random Petard from Veleza. Petard dies. Gabettos are dying. Trebs are deployed on the castle. Are you kidding me, Vinch? Excuse me? Is this happening? Is he holding here? We see infantry upgrades for those that want to get excited about uh, maybe more infantry. But I think that was just for the Gabetto. And look how far the cannons have to go forward. They have to go so far because of the lack of range. Like this guy looks like kind of like a normal Treb. You know, normal Treb doing normal range things. There's only two Trebs for Vinch, though. Oh, God. Keshik's come in from Vinchester to clear out these Trebs. He's been repairing his Trebs. No way, dude. No way Vinch wins this game. Are you serious? Oh, my God. The castle's going to fall. 
I like have her being spammed in with all their attack to take out the Trebs, but it doesn't save the castle. Wow. And Finch saves the Trebs again. Wow. What? Okay, so do you tech switch now? I think making more like have to try and raid crucial areas could be important. But I think it's too late to tech switch. I think going champions right now would lose you the game. Because again, eight pierce armor, infantry unit, which is slow. You're still taking three damage a hit from the heavy cab archer. Plus there could be a meat shield. Finch is, is stressed because of the stress, the like craziness of the situation, by the way. And he's overboomed big time. He has 154 vills with 11 more in queue. So I think continuing with the cav in combination with infantry could be good, but you can't just go straight infantry. Vinch, with his long-range traps, will take out another castle here. He couldn't take this gold the entire time. Veleza was on it. Bumber cannons exposed. And Veleza calls the GG. Are you kidding me, Vinch? Are you kidding me? What a freaking hold, man. How? Wow, that was ridiculous. Uh, Vinchester's playing out of his mind. And now, if you're Veleza, it's going to be very hard to envision yourself winning three straight. Now, the last time I saw these two play tournament against each other was Titans League Season 1 Finals. And Vinchester was up 3-1 on Veleza, and then it went to Game 7. So just saying. Um, but, dang. The Cav Archer Halb play was perfect. And in terms of total resources collected, Veleza had a lot more gold, but a lot of his gold units were going down to the Halbs. Was the GG a little early? I don't really think so. You have 12 army right now. You, at this point, have tried a comp your best composition in your view. Trying to tech switch into champions would be a loss, 100%. It wouldn't work here. I know some people would like to see it, but it, it wouldn't work. Vinchester is going to have a massive army soon. All these buildings are going to go down. You're going to have to regroup probably in your base. I, I don't think it's necessarily an early GG here. I can understand why people would want to see a fight. Now, the issue for Veleza was everything he was doing was relying on gold. I think he didn't want to make skirmishers because Mali and skirmishers like Bracer. But in hindsight, I honestly feel like going for skirmishers would be good. And you could use similar logic to what we did with the Tatar Halbs. Yes, Tatar Halbs lack armor, so they don't have as much potential as other Halbs do. But there's still a lot of bonus damage. And Mali and skirmishers, they lack the attack. But the main damage output from skirmishers anyways is simply comes down to their damage output from the bonus damage. So I think camel skirmisher is what I would have preferred. I liked everything else. But that, of course, is hindsight. Like, he had Vinch on the defensive this entire time. The fact that Vinch held that was just because of his ridiculously stubborn micro against the cannons. And the sick play to go for the treb upgrades. So you also just kind of have to tip your hat to the opponent there. Instead of heavily questioning your decisions, you just have to say, wow, what a sick hold from him. Because when you have the gold control and you have the map control, you, you could brute force your way in here. But here's the big thing for me. So when did this castle go down? Okay, so let's go to when this castle goes down. Okay, castle goes down around here, right? Okay, now here's my thing. You take out this castle. Your opponent doesn't have bomber cannons. You don't see another castle to ever make trebs. He doesn't have trebs now. I think you're happy with the control that you have here. And your thinking is, make sure he's not on these resources. Now, there's normally a couple different steps that happen in these types of games, guys. You take out this castle, and then you're ready to swing your siege next to a new castle of your own to take out their next castle. He didn't take this stone. Now, he does, actually. If I recall, he does it, like, right now. Hello? Make me look good, please. He takes it now, right? Okay, he doesn't take it, but that's my point. I think right here, this siege, if he knew about this castle, and had he taken some of that stone... He, he is happy to sacrifice some camel numbers to push Vinchester back into his base. He drops a castle here. This castle's gone. And now you can pull Vinch apart because you could just raid him to death on different angles. Um, 
And then it's not even about efficiency of the fights. It's just a raid game. And you've got castles everywhere. So I think that was it. He was a little too tunnel visioned, I guess you could say. But understandably tunnel visioned if he felt like he had all the gold controlled. And maybe that, you know, tech switching into something else wouldn't have worked there. Like that micro from Vinch was insane. He was constantly moving these cav archers. What was his military peak APM? It was both really high for both of them. But like he was clicking so much with those CA. Running under castle fire. It was also running into camels constantly, but it was he felt like it was worth it to type snipe the bomber cannons. Okay, and here we are, game five. Finchester just pulling up some incredible results. Veleza played really well. Veleza learned as well Vinchester's preferences and denied him from going forward in the previous game. Still didn't matter. Hindustani's for Vinch. A sieve that could be a little awkward here against the Vikings. Um, as they are a civilization, which are kind of known as a counter-civilization against knights, mainly, anyways. And there's not going to be any knights from Vikings, I can promise you that. Um, Beleza still could go light calf, as that's still common to fight for the relic control. Mm. Good news here, though, for Vinchester, is if you can get to the nine range hand cannons in combination with skirms, it could be really awkward for the Vikings. Um, I think we could see Onager from both. Remember, Hindustanis also get Bomber Cannon later. But for the Vikings, the main thing is their economy is really good. So the, all those late-game things we mentioned about the Hindustanis, the Vikings are the civilization that could have that timing with the faster imp in the forward castle. But yeah, I'm impressed with Vinch and how he was able to get the job done. His micro was just so insane in the previous game, like... I was just saying, uh, I don't know if it'll be in the edit or not, because Hardy will go through this later, but for those on YouTube, like, his cav archers were moving all the time up against uh, his opponent and up against his bomber cannon. So Vinch still has Malay available, right? And then Veleza will have Japanese, which is a really bad matchup against Malay. And then Portuguese. Portuguese, I don't consider it to be too bad. But we'll see. Always forget about the handkins with Hindustanis. Yeah, and they outrange Arbalest. They increased the accuracy of hand cannons. I think they made hand cannons have more HP. They also made hand cannons cheaper at one point. And then a later patch gave Hindustanis nine range hand cannons. Combine that with skirms, and Vikings can't really go infantry and archer. So. Why are Japanese bad against Malay? I think everything Japanese are good at, Malay beat them too with their timings. It's like Japanese have flexible Dark Age, right? With the cheap mining camps, mills, and lumber camps. But Malay will beat them to feudal and eco upgrades. Malay will beat them to castle and eco upgrades. Japanese have good monks. Malay have good monks as well. And again, they'll be in Castle Age faster, so you can make the monks. Both civs have good archers and skirms. They're identical in terms of bonuses, but then Japanese don't get bomber cannons, and Malay do. Um, I, I It's more of a timing thing, right? But I think that Japanese, typically, it's like they have slightly better timings economically and slightly more efficiency than their opponent. And then they can use the good infantry to counter good cav civ, for example. But anytime Japanese is in a matchup where the opponent doesn't rely heavily on going stable units, actually, I find the Japanese to be worse. Even Japanese Koreans could be awkward, right? Even though Koreans aren't seen as strong. Koreans have better siege. Koreans get the armor upgrades for the archers. Um... Britons. Britons is an obvious example. Even Vikings. Like, Vikings, uh, they have better economy. They also have good infantry and archers. That is if we we're talking straight land maps. Obviously, if we're talking water maps, Japanese have some really fun bonuses that kind of tax on. I know Malay do too, but, like, I think I would prefer Japanese on water because of their fishing bonus. And the, the savings on the wood leads to them getting more docks and fishing ships and whatnot so so market blacksmith here for Veleza. he might just boom vikings get wheelbarrow for free and feudal and handcart for free and castle 
Yes, Vikings don't get bomber cannons. I saw a game. It was Jordan versus Barles, and I think the round of 16 set. We sped through most of it. And we got to a point in the game in post-imp where Jordan had five bomber cannons, Hussars ready to go, and tons of nine-range hand cannons. And I didn't feel like the Viking player could do anything. Then Jordan, uncharacteristically, just ran his bomber cannons into his opponent's army. Didn't even shoot with them. Just lost five bomber cannons. And then suddenly Trebs could move out and Treb down all his stuff, and he just fell apart. So the last time I saw this, Vikings did win, but there was a very big error on the part of the Hindustanis. In my opinion. Wow, look at this uptime from Veleza. This is... I think you might need to pressure this. The idea here is Veleza saying, good luck getting to late game and all those bonuses because I'm going to have such a big economy that I'm going to push out across the map and stop you. The rare skipping of the Relic Contest on Arena here. Stone being forward could be an issue. I wonder if he'll consider town centering it. Would love to see a town center here or here next to the wood and gold. I think you give up the main gold for now. You don't want to commit to this area because if you're pressured there, then that's... You're giving them potential to do even more damage. This starting scout's going to be microing in order to try and stop the enemy from getting monks. I think this might be somewhat similar to what Vinchester did with the Khmer, where the uh, scouts are added later. But it was a lot easier for Vinch to do it because he didn't have to add the barracks as well. So it's more investment to get back into the, uh, the middle control here. Anyways, Insta-3 TCs. <laughs> Would have wall joined Masters of Arena? I would love that, man. He wouldn't have gotten very far, but... I've been keeping an eye on him. I haven't seen him playing recently. But I'd like to see what he's been up to. Why is Vinch's timing late? Uh, because he's going for scouts. Right? Where's the stable? Oh, he's not going for scouts. Interesting. Well, he can go instant three TCs. It went Spearman and Mon... So you want to be able to make the Monastery right away, and obviously you want to be able to make Spearman, and then you want your Eco Upgrades too. And he didn't have the free wheelbarrow, free handcart. Honestly, Velez has kind of gone a little too quick here. Like, I think he might have a teensy bit of TC idle time. Two Vils later, when you're going to compete for Relics versus someone that's full booming, is standard, Mark, for what it's worth. That's, that's normal. But it's either, like, basically Vinch could have played it out towards the stable, and then his third TC would have been delayed. He's opted here to instead just go without the stable, which honestly is the perfect play. Because it doesn't seem like the opponent is going to be uh, adding any scouts here from what he's seen. Yeah, he's not late. The opponent was fast is the right way to say it. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If Veleza would have seen that Vinchester had more scouts, then what he would have done, it, it, he probably never would have added this monastery. But he's kind of hoping right now that he can loop back home with this scout and heal it up. And if he can heal up this scout, then it becomes both players in similar positions. Because he'll have a full HP scout. And actually, I think what he should do, he should go right to the gate, he should boop this scout, and then run inside. That way, this is weak. And his will be full HP. Ready? He's going to do it. I know him. He's going to do it. Okay. Well, all right. Fine. All right. It was a good idea. Because Vinch, you know, he doesn't know that his opponent has a monastery. But whatever. Make me look dumb. There's the stable for Vinch now. A little bit on stone for Vinch. Might consider a fourth town center. Scout's now healing up. But a little bit of mind games, right? In terms of what's possible. And now Vinch is going to be like, Aha! I can attack you. Oh wait, I can't attack you. You're strong now. What happened? He doesn't know if it's a new scout or not, but I'm sure after seeing the monk, he's going to know. Vinch already has one relic. 
Vinch ready to defend this monk. Trying to block. He got some amazing blocks off. But the scout's gonna... Doink! Kill it. Nice. And Vinch still trying to block this scout. And that's the only scout that Veleza has. So it is important. But he shouldn't lose this scout. He should start to convert something. And I think Veleza will have to back away. Or, or Vinch will have to back away. Yep. Very well played from Veleza. I really like this. And good good play from Vinchester as well. But I think Vinchester's scout edition has more utility because Veleza is going to want map control. Fourth TC now for Vinch. Dang. Spearman will get converted. Spearman gets deleted. He'd rather die than switch to that Keller. Cheap villagers for the Hindustanis allows you to have a four town center boom and not to lay your imp too much, in my experience, so that's fine. And remember, Veleza doesn't know that Vinch has more scouts. He thought it was just one, and now he's going to find out the hard way. Say goodbye to all your monks, and what a great play from Vinch. But also, oh, a scout gets converted, which is good because he lost his scout here while killing this monk. Vinch is going to be really annoyed that happened there. I think he could have microed it better. I think you can go two scouts on each monk there. But you also still have to consider that a little unlucky because it was monks versus scouts. And it was not contested at all, so. Oh, not again. Not again. No way. Uh. My scouts are there. Uh. How do you like it, Vinchester? <laughs> How do you like it? This is payback for Veleza. Uh, for, yeah, because of everything Vinchester's done. Dang, man. That's good, because now your opponent has to spend an extra 100 gold to get another monk out there. I really like how Veleza played this. He got one relic for himself, and he killed a bunch of monks. He's going triple barracks. He's opening supplies! He wants to go champ opening? Okay, it's interesting. I No, I don't like that at all. I think he meant to click Pikeman. That's my guess. Because you're not fearing your opponent's going to go Archers. If you're fearing your opponent's going to go Archers, then you would probably want to go Gambison. You could consider Gambison Champions with some of your own Archers and then Skirms. Because Gambison's gives you the extra Pierce Armor that's kind of new to our game. I guess champs can be good against the like have. Ah, it is true. Maybe he's fearing the Ghulam. But Vinch sees this now. He sees the barracks, which is going to tell him infantry, which is going to tell him hand cannon. But he shouldn't be told it's going to be hand cannon anyways, because that's like... I mean, I talked about that minute one. You should just do it regardless. Anyways, Vinch sees it. And Vinch knows he's going to get pushed on the middle, so he's starting to move the relics back to a new monastery. Really smart. Okay, so what you need here is this, if you're Vinch. You need uh, your castle to be back here-ish when you build it. And then you need uh, two siege workshops. And archer ranges can come later, honestly, but a couple siege workshops would be really good. A siege workshop from Veleza. Is he going to go siege ramp? You can't go Bomber Cannon. He might go Ram Champion. The champions. That'd be interesting. And hey, Longswords beat Lightcap. Fortified Wall now for Vinchester. I don't like the Siege Workshop location. Just in case this gets bad, but... Yeah, actually, I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. I like Vinch's activity with the Lightcap. Viking Economy, Viking Infantry. Let's go. We're going to see Rams, not Trebs. At least not Trebs yet. Oh, those Siege Workshops are so exposed. Chemistry takes forever to complete. What a boom from Veleza. And he's buying some stone. He's going to drop a forward castle as well. Here he goes. I think Vinch might struggle, but Vinch is going to add Manganels now to try and hit the Rams. That's interesting. Also, Lycav have done a good job at keeping his opponent active. 
Vinch sees the castle, knows the mangonels can't really deny that. Could hit the rams for the time being, though. And he's going to add more walls. All right. Obviously, they have to decide on these things in the moment. Chemistry's on the way. 90 seconds away. And a siege tower! A siege tower! That's the perfect play! <laughs> someone someone just said siege tower remains dead. That's actually the perfect play. Leza thought about it maybe a little bit later than some of the low the legends out there would have. But that's a great play. You can hop over that wall. It's made for these situations. Let's go into the tower. Load them up, boys. Load them up. Load them up. Oh, my God. Load them up. Thank you. There we go. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Good luck walling it, fool. Good luck walling it. I'm in a taxi. You can't go over a gate with it, Leza. All right, he's going there. There we go. Choo-choo. Special delivery. Two-handed swordsman to your face. Do your base. Okay, well, now they need another siege tower. Oh, no, they're through. Okay. So that's nice. Also, Vinch wasn't able to move back all the relics. Vinch can now make bomber cannons and hand cannons, though. God, the siege workshop locations are so crucial here. I'm telling you guys. And it's all about just brute forcing your way in here if you're Veleza. It's the anti-fat slop, okay? You don't hide behind walls. You push your opponent's walls with everything you've got. With what Vinch has in queue, if he had that army right now, this would be glorious. But he doesn't have it in queue. Or, sorry, he does have it in queue, sorry, but they have to be created. <laughs> and these rams are chug -a, a choo chewing right into the base. And this map control is going to be beautiful for Vleza. And Vleza could think about other things, too. He could think about going for archer range units to counter this. This is pretty much everything for Vinch. It's just the gunpowder. And if, if that's everything you've got, then Aztecs could always go for skirmishers. This is similar to what Veleza tried in the previous game. Like, you just push in with castles and siege all the time. But this time, he had a sick economy. It was better than Vinchester's, and Vinchester is a bit more predictable, possibly, in what he's going for. Shout out to the Siege Tower, though. I, I like how the Siege Tower is still overseeing all this. Next Siege Workshop goes down as well, so he can't even make his first cannon yet. Oh, man. That's, that's not going to stay up. The Siege Ram and the Trebs will take that down. That is so much wasted time. This is sick from Veleza. Let's go. And now, I think you're just happy to keep your Trebs underneath the castle and Treb back everything you can, and you you flex into the night next uh, unit type. Because you will meet resistance still. Because you haven't killed the army from Vinchester. And Vinchester's got a lot of gunpowder. So you need an answer to that gunpowder. Economy's pretty good. He is adding the ranges now. Vinch is escaping. Whoa. I don't know if that's been spotted. Rewall it. Rewall it so he doesn't know. And maybe you could sneak out and get stone somewhere. Or drop a TC. Okay, first bomber cannon's out. Second bomber cannon. Third bomber cannon's on the way. This game is insane. Skirms are coming in for Veleza. Vinch doesn't really have space to do much, right? He probably wants stables. The Siege Tower! The Siege Tower's going in for the cannon! Go! Choo-choo! Multi-use weapon. Okay, well... Alright, it didn't, it didn't necessarily work out as he would have wanted, but look at the distraction. Look what it's allowed the Skirms to do. Look what it's allowed that Treb to do. It took out a Bombard Cannon there. That was wonderful from Beleza. Vinch still has more pop, funnily enough. Vinch has more villagers, funnily enough, even though he's the only one that's lost villagers this game. Uh, but he's still losing lots of gold units. He doesn't really have a strong answer to the Skirms. You would normally think the cab, but he doesn't have the space for buildings. And he doesn't have a lot of the upgrades. And I think Veleza could just micro away from the one bomber cannon or two bomber cannons that's there, take out all the hand cannons, and then take us to the next game in what has been a really fun arena semifinal. 
Like, strategically, this has been awesome. As far as the execution's concerned, that's been really clean from both. Both players have shown insane fight. But, you know, after Vinchester won the previous game, you had to put your money on him, and money's still probably on him, but Valesa could take it one game at a time. And as I mentioned before, I've seen these two in a 3-1 scenario before where Vinch is up 3-1, and it did go to the seventh game. This wasn't on Arena, obviously. It does kind of bother me that we don't see champion yet. I feel I feel like getting the champion upgrade would be nice here. And it's also crazy to me. We've got a castle up here and golden come. We had villagers escape here. Like, it, it, maybe it's doable for Vinchester. I don't think so. Still, I I think that the army count is just still too little for him, and he's got too many fires to put out. But we'll see. Two-handed swordsman go in, kill one of the bombard cannons. Hey, you just don't have the hand cannon numbers, right? Every time there's a hand cannon, a wave of skirms comes in and kills them. Golden come still somehow reasonable for Vinch. I don't fully understand it. You just gotta get more skirms out here for your Veleza. Hey, he's dropping more ranges to sort that problem out. Siege rams just clearing up some more areas in the walls, which has perhaps been an issue for him. Which is why the reinforcements haven't been as quick. Still just holding this position. The KD is better for Finch. Because these hand cannons have killed a lot of infantry. But the infantry player is happy to just send in more. And happy to sacrifice skirms to take out the gold units. We've seen this time and time again from Veleza. Look at the micro. Look how many shots are going on hand cannons right now. He's clicking like a madman on those things. And he just wants the bombard cannons and the hand cannons. And that's all he's ever really going to be up against. Does the light cap have feudal age upgrades? It's looking really bad for Vinchester. And I think Veleza is just moments away from getting this win. He's been really micro-focused here. He hasn't gone up above 37 farms much. He's just been focusing primarily on producing what the eco he does have. And then also focus firing what he can. Look, Vinch ran out of gold there to repair that cannon. <laughs> This castle was 35 kills, by the way, and it looks like Veleza noticed this castle, so he's got a treb here now. And he's going to shift his focus over there. Maybe he's been thinking, like, how does this guy have resources? It still doesn't make much sense to me how he has so many resources. Every nook and cranny is filled with farms. Random swordsman attacking houses? What? What? What are you farming here for, bro? This is the... This is a flex, man. Veleza's trying to tell him to resign. That's what this is. Yeah, uh, I don't fear your gunman. Sorry. Uh, we're just going to farm right next to you. All orderly, too. Hey, I guess Vinchester's always going to prioritize the castle, so you could argue, you could tell those villagers they're safe, but that seems like a bunch of BS to me. What is that? At least do it back here. Population still close. But it's the Vil count that is keeping it close for Vinch. He does have a lot of Bombard Cannons again. This would be an amazing comeback. He can't come back in this one, right? Beleza, get champion, please. Get champion. You, you, like, you're fighting with units that aren't maxed out. Please get champion. This castle goes down. This could be the beginning of the end. I don't know. Siege Ram. Oh, there's no counter to the Siege Ram. Siege Ram! Bam! Bam! Get sieged, you little man. Bam! Boom! Bam! Bop! Boom! Oh, huge. Two cannons now for Vinch. Beleza loses his castle. The farmers are a little less secure now. But it's the rams that can't be stopped at the moment. And as long as there's more skirms and as long as there's more two-handed swordsmen and rams following this up, it's going to get the job done. And it gets the job done. Wow. So he essentially just full boomed into a massive siege ram infantry skirmisher push, and it worked. He didn't collect as many resources. The KD didn't even look as good, but he just brute forced his way through. That was awesome. And again, like, he stopped making bills at 114. 
he wasn't adding a lot of new eco here. He was just sending everything he had. He was kind of at the limit through the middle that whole time. And he had faith that the push would work, and it does. Scores 3-2 now. These games have been really good. Like, both of these guys, whoever wins here, obviously, is going to look fantastic in a final. So, yeah, classic forward farms into uh, CDRAM strategy that we all expected. There's still a big civilization for both remaining. It's the Portuguese for Veleza and then the uh, Malay for Vinchester. Those are their top picks. All right, here we are. We've got game number six. Vinchester's gone for his number two pick. The Italians, Velez has gone for his number one pick, the Portuguese. Obviously, Velez needs to win here. If he does not win, he is out. And then Vinchester moves on to the final. But if he does win, he will play most likely Japanese in the final game up against Vinchester's Malay. That is Vinchester's number one pick. So it will be an uphill uh, battle for Velez. But we'll see. Uh, Japanese are very flexible civilization. It might even be Persians, but that's just kind of my expectation if we get to the seventh game. Portuguese, all their gold units are cheaper. So whether it be monks or knights or archers, they have lots of things at their disposal. Uh, the Italians, it's cheaper to go up to each age. And Italians are also underrated and flexible on land. They have very strong archers, though. And they do have uh, good stable units. So they have better stable units than the Portuguese. Um, well, yes, overall. I guess Portuguese have fully upgraded Cavalier, and so do the Italians. But the uh, Hussar upgrade being available for the Italians makes their late game a bit better there. And then I guess if you compare the barracks, the Portuguese has the slightly better barracks. But the Italians does have the Condo, which could be pretty good against the Portuguese if the Portuguese consider... Going into some gunpowder. And it just helps timings in general, right? And if you think about how Vinchester has won games and how many players won games in this tournament, the faster Imperial Age with the forward castle is extremely strong. I think Italians should be better suited for that. Uh, people are saying that they want to see Vinchester pick Goths, which would be his other option for the final game. But that is not going to happen, so no one on YouTube get your hopes up for that. Even from Vinchester, who used to pick Goths all the time back in tournaments. But he's still a funky player. He's still really creative, but he's not creative for the sake of being creative anymore. He lost a lot of games picking Goths in the early years. But he also did get some good wins with Goths, to be fair. So, there, Listen, Goths are better than ever. I'm not saying Goths are bad. I'm just saying Malay was his number one pick. His number one pick could have been the doesn't exist ease and... It, it, he would still go for it because it's his number one pick. Wouldn't go for his last pick in a game seven in a $10,000 tournament. Are you kidding me? Anyways, there's a second lumber camp for Vinch. It'll probably just be a smooth eco approach towards scouts and light calf. And I could see Valesa doing the same. <laughs> First pick Romans. We are including Romans in Titans League. Titans League will be the first tournament in which Romans is allowed to be played in. What do you guys expect? Do you think they're going to get to see a lot of gameplay? I am rather curious. I think that in a play all three over the first couple weeks, I think we're not going to see them that much. Then like one or two people is going to design a strat around them. Or there's, gonna, there's always a breakthrough game or two where people are like, whoa, that's actually really good. And then other people might try and pick them. But I, I'm going to assume we don't see them in the drafts, but could be good for an underdog. Like, if you're playing in the qualifier, if you're playing in silver and you feel like you don't have a shot, just test out some things with Romans. Maybe they've got some really ridiculous build orders. My thought after playing against Romans is that their eco is scary good. So I could see them being good on closed maps, but I'm not sure they'd be as good as some of the other S-tier civs on closed maps. So, Yeah, it, it, we would maybe see Romans in best of fives and best of sevens, but in a play all three where you're only seeing three games in Titans League, I don't think we'll see them. Okay. 
I find it interesting how Viper thinks Romans will be decent, but not that incredible. That's pretty much where I'm at as well, right? Like, nothing about Roman stands out to you and says, oh my god, that's going to be OP, based on pro meta. They don't have Arbalest, which is already a big strike against them. And they don't have a hugely flexible tech tree. I think they'll be a good team game civilization. And potentially a good water civilization. But the thing that really feels strong about the Romans, and I'd have to play around with it more is the 5% more efficiency to everything that they do. And that, when I played against Romans, it's felt like their economy is just insane, so. But I I haven't had enough experiences yet. We'll see. Vinchester will drop a stable. Okay, there we go. Stable, blacksmith. Stable market for Veleza. So he will opt to possibly use the market to balance out his economy. He likely won't get upgrades. Vinchester could consider upgrades. Man at arms with the armor is pretty legit, but what to follow with? Yeah, you like follow into archers and then eventually have to switch out of archers, which isn't bad though. It's not bad. You could still go man at arm archers and feudal age on Arabia and then go into knights and castle. Like, I think basically you want to play into economy with knight siege. And that suits my play style, anyways. So I think it could be good for a lot of people. Okay, Relic Generations, pretty even in this one. Two Relics closer to Vinch. Now this one's probably is more so neutral, even though it's off to the side. And then these two Relics are closer to Vleza. Yeah, I agree. The Unique Unit is too expensive to, to really commit to with the Romans, in my opinion. Again, talking at it from a 1v1 perspective, but. Alright, scouts attacking the walls. It's interesting. It's like Vinch doesn't think his opponent's adding more scouts right now. He's just attacking the gates, waiting for something to leave. <laughs> That's so annoying. <laughs> Come on out. We know you're in there. <laughs> and then these two scouts see the starting scout from Beleza. Okay. The point isn't to commit to centurions though, it's to sprinkle a few in your army to buff the infantry. Yeah, that's how they that's how they want them to be used. But every unit that is like a common complementary unit that the devs have introduced to the game, they have quickly forgotten about and hasn't really been utilized. Like the Hussite Wagon, for example, for Bohemians? It's it's not used effectively as that, and they made Bohemians so strong even without that inclusion that they can't really buff the Hussite Wagon without making Bohemians too strong at what they're already good at, so... They might be trying to, to fix that theme. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay, so, so Vleza's, like, hiding the fact that he has scouts. He tries to surprise Vinch, and Vinch notices immediately. And also, we have Husbandry coming in for Vinchester. So he is now faster with his units. So that means the scouts could kill this light cav. He's going to aim to block here. Block, 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 Gets the kill. Wow. It kind of sounded like a chicken there, honestly. Block, block. But apologies for the chicken noises. Second TC is going to be up for Vinch on the very forward goal. I I do not like that. I feel like if you ever lose map control, you are going to be siege pushed or castle dropped. But better to take it now than later, I suppose. And, uh, you know, we don't have the third TC yet, but we do have the TCs here for Veleza. But notice the difference in scouts. He's only got three light cav, and then he stopped because he's putting all of his food into TCs. So he needs to be really efficient with these three light cav because he's probably not going to have much more. And light cav can kill monks, as we know. We actually do not even have a monastery for Veleza. Ooh. So he's delayed the monastery. Interesting. I really like his eco setup right now. He even buys food using the market. Oh man, his vill count's going to be nice. Hmm. It's so funny. Arena's hilarious. It's like getting excited over the timing on when they make a scout. <laughs> or if they make a monastery or not. It's like, 
Whoa, extreme variation. Oh my goodness. Oh my, oh my god. The light cap kill the monk. Holy crap. And Velez is not making any monks. What? You know. <laughs> it all matters. I'm not acting like it doesn't matter, but it's kind of interesting. I guess with six scouts, you should maybe consider fighting off the three light cap. That's going to be relic number one there for Vinchester. Just now, TC number three, but this is more along the lines of a standard timing. Vinchester is, is still looking for monks and not seeing any. I think the ideal here for Veleza is to eventually get to a point, and it'll be soon, where he can make enough light calf to compete with numbers, and then add the monastery, and then get the relics that are remaining. Hmm. Yeah, the huge boom worked really well in the previous game, so why not try it again? Yeah, agreed. And Italians have cheaper Imperial. So if you played it out with the standard economy approach like Vinch has done with the stable, you will likely not win the race to Imp and could have some problems there. Not to mention that you also have to say that I think Vinchester is just better at going for the Relic War. I think his Viker has been superior, so... You kind of play towards your strengths and away from your opponent's strengths a little bit. Now, I like husbandry. I like husbandry a lot. What I don't like is how Vinchester isn't trying to kill these light cap. That bothers me. He should recognize that his units are in higher numbers and that his opponent's not adding more. And he should be... Like, this is how you take care of the light cap and make sure they can't kill your monks. Is you just chase them, always. This could have been happening two minutes ago. Now, we're still going to see a loop-de-loop -loop from Veleza. Because he really wants to kill monks. But he's going to lose his light cap. Slowly but surely, so. And you want to go this way, then you're just further away from your base. So, go ahead. But still good work from Veleza. Good work from Vinch to, you know, notice with this monk. But, like, this situation that Veleza's in, where he has to go home now, this would have happened before. But it, it took him a bit to come to the conclusion that there's no monks out there. So he was really hoping to kill monks. But yeah, he's just going to end up killing these light calf now. So Vinch might get all the relics. Look at the e the resources for Veleza, though. Oh, boy. Dang, man. This is crazy. All right, you could just use one unit at this point. You're blocking. Oh, God, now he's slower because he got Light Cab. It makes your unit slower, too. Ah! Okay, Light Cab's dead. He was doing something else. He was adding an archery range. I'd love a Siege Workshop in the middle right now from Vinch. Something we've, like, never seen in this series, but... Not even a forward castle. You, if the player uh, against you is booming, you don't want the forward castle. You want it defensive, but... Just make a couple, like a Manganel or two, you know? Les is imping. Dropping archer ranges. He probably wants archers for map control. And then a forward castle. Could be a defensive castle. We'll see. Let's look at res collected. The boom is paid off. That's huge. Nice thing for Vinch, though, is he doesn't have to spend as much to uh, make it to Imp. So he can be behind in resources collected. And he's going to have a castle up. Ooh. She switched sides. And now she pays the price. We told you not to switch sides, you traitor. Okay, outpost is up. Velez a little bit paranoid because forward siege or forward castle could be happening here. Vinchester dropping his university in the back. He will click up to Imp here in a moment. Alrighty. Funnily enough, when that villager was getting shot, Vinchester could have seen that his opponent had Bodkin Arrow. That's kind of interesting, because the TC would have shown that. You know what I really like here, guys, but I'd probably lose with it, because it's probably bad, is I just like full Hussar opening. Bombarkin and Hussar. I think that's probably a pretty decent play. You take good enough trades initially, and then 
you have bomber cannons to keep your castles up? Remember, this is Velez's best civilization remaining. He has to win this. We're not seeing any additional armor upgrades, though, from Vinch. And Vinch is actually getting Town Watch so he could see what's happening here. Actually, it's not really applying to anything here. It would be more so his buildings elsewhere, but it's still a good upgrade to get. And wow, Velez is hiding this, like, forever. I think Vinch is making Genoese crossbow because he's expecting Cavalier. He should see the TC has 5 plus 3. That should be that should tell you everything you need to know. Okay, and now he sees crossbow, so now he knows it's Arbalest. Okay, so what's his answer? We should see Vils coming across the map soon for Veleza. He's going bloodlines and going armor. He's going to go Hussar. Wouldn't hate Cavalier. You have so much gold. What? He's going for more ranges? Okay, so he wants Skirms or his own archers. Skirm is, is obviously not a bad move. I'm a very big fan of Hussar, though. But I guess he doesn't have a ton of food income, so I don't know. Both players need bomber cannons. Yeah, both players need bomber cannons. Okay, Vinch sees the Vils, so Vinch will know what this means. Good activity with the light calf. He's going to drop another castle here. He needs chemistry immediately. It's on the way. This castle could easily be denied. This castle's crazy, man. What do you... Oh, God, Vinch. Oh, no, dude. No. That castle's denied now. You can't... You, you can't be doing that. Ay, ay, ay. Light cav going down. There's 28 arbs from Veleza. Think about all the upgrades you need on Skirms before you even talk about the numbers. The straight boom play from Veleza has kind of been the answer to Vinchester. It wasn't a straight boom, I guess, but he he said, screw your relics. I think it's going to be really tough for Vinch to hold here. This Treb will get sniped by a Bombar Cannon. It's packing back up. Vinchester realizes. So cheap to mass gold units with the Portuguese. No Fatorias, by the way. Portuguese have that at their disposal, but they do not have to use it. And oh god, if you delete this castle, which you kind of have to, so you don't lose the stone, then the units can run into your base, and he decides to drop one back there. I don't, I don't know. Is this the right play? Yeah, Velez is going in, but there's Skirms there now. He's got to be a little bit careful. Skirms without armor, though. So, you know, Skirms will get kills, but it's not as insane. Ooh, Vinchester killing and converting some arbs over here, though. That's kind of nice. As well as making a bombard cannon here. And these two trebuchets going for the siege workshop from Veleza. My question is for Veleza, where's the cannons been, dude? Oh, we just lost one to the treb shot. Oh, God. Was that me? Did I do that? I'm so sorry. Because I thought he'd have four or five cannons already. He's on one. Would have been on two had that treb not connected. And now the skirms have been able to mass a little bit. And Vinch has his own cannon. Uh, yeah, has his own cannons. We see cab upgrades for Velez as I think he's starting to worry and feels like he needs an answer to the skirms now. Could be really concerning to show your hand early on cav though, because the Italians can make Genoese crossbow against that. How are the Bomber Cannon Micro look, though? It's looking pretty good for Veleza right now because he's got two weak Trebs to aim at. Hasn't killed them yet. Treb RNG is going to be so important here. That attack round from Vinch was legendary. He predicted this, this uh, direction. The units would be going there for Vinch. Castle could go down for Vinch, though. An attack round there. Kills an arb or two. We've got two bombard cannons for both. Vinch isn't making another one right now. And the army counts are extremely low based on what's possible. Archibus now on the way for v Veleza, which means his uh, bombard cannons would be affected by ballistics. But will he have the cannons alive when the upgrade's completed? He's got the upgrade now. He won't have much support because the arb number is lower than it was before. Okay, now you can see that upgrade paying off. For, I think Vinchester will have realized it here, so he has to move his units a lot more. Yeah, he knows. He's dodging it. 
He's dodging it, but he's losing his skirms. He killed the Treb, though, and he's holding on. This is crazy. Oh, Treb's going to go down. Veleza continues his push. Dang. See, my thing is, like, Archer play is extremely technical, okay? I know Vinch has that in his wheelhouse, but if you just had enough Hustars to snipe the Bombard Cannons, you could do anything else you want. But you now, you played the whole ranged unit game against a player who's going to be faster to Bombard Cannons and Archers than you. It's weird. Like, sometimes instead of joining them, you just have to beat them at something else. Here, we have the repair villagers getting taken out from Vinch, so he could hope to pick these things off. Micro's got to be so difficult for Vinch right now, though. He's doing it. He's somehow holding on. He has the population lead. He has five relics. He's getting Hussar. He doesn't have the worst farming eco ever. He's going to run out of stone. But even moments like this where he hops out and then, you know, forces Veleza to back up is really important to him. If he had 15 Hussars right now with the Skirms and the final armor, he could push back the cannons and the castle stays up. I don't think he can do that, though. Oh, God, the shots. Oh, God, it's looking bad. Oh, it's looking real bad here for Vinch. Oh, my. Did you see those shots? That went really far. Les expanding with castles. He's got full gold and stone control in the middle. 29 arbs, 9 light cap. We've got 16 skirms and 10 hussars for Vinchester. He just doesn't have a big army comp. And Velez is going to continue to castle creep in. And we're creeping closer and closer to a seventh game. If this push continues for Veleza. I don't think you can easily be broken here if you get the castle down. Because you can use those castles to protect you. But here comes the no gold comp for Vinchester. The player with the five relics and the Hussars. They could still pack a punch here. Mainly against the Siege. And if the Siege is cleared out of the picture. The Skirms can clear the Arbs out. The Arbs will have to focus down the Hussars. And Vinchester isn't finished yet. He's killed a lot of Bombard Cannons here. He will not kill all of them, though. And he will not be able to fully deny this castle. I don't think so, anyways. Maybe I'm wrong. It, it might be denied. More Hussars flying in. More Skirms getting kills on Arbs. Castle's at 96%? Castle is going to be denied? And all of a sudden, you know, if you don't have the protection of this castle... You know, maybe this stuff gets all picked off. He's got six Bomber Cannons there still. Man, I would love to see... I mean, the castle's going to complete eventually, right? I would really love to see Vinchester get attack upgrades on his Hussars. He doesn't have a single one. They, you prioritize the armor and the up, Hussar upgrade first every time. But you really need a little bit more damage output. Just a couple boops there. And this castle's going to end up completing. There's not a lot of siege for Vinch. He's trying to mass it up right now. But yeah, Castle will go up, which will make running this direction awkward. And Hussar's engaged, but you've got double Castle Fire now. You've got a big Arb Ball still, and this Castle was just huge. Already killed two units. Pavise coming in. Does Can someone remind me if Pavise affects Skirms? I like this from Vinch, by the way. Nice raid. It won't last long, though. Uh, yeah, you, this death ball is just too hard to approach at this point. The skirms are trying to weaken the arb number, but the hussars have disappeared, which means the skirms will disappear. Vleza maintains control, and he will maintain control with the, of this area and take out these trebs. It was a good move from Vinch, and Vleza even attack rounds between the trebs. So he could kind of do damage to both of them. Dang. This gold is fine. Like, your opponent has relics, sure. But you can take this gold. You can take this gold. The relics are probably not too far into your opponent's base. If you're worried about your long term, you might not want to spend your gold on this. But I honestly wouldn't even mind Cavalier from Bleza. I, I, I mean, you, you need... The Skirm is the unit you're weakest to right now, right? So, I mean, like have safe, though. Like have is safe. I don't see how you stop this death ball. Les's unit control is too good, and the bonuses at play here too strong. 
This number one sim pick for a reason. Dang, big shot there from Vinchester. And again, still got 60 on food. So if he could kill the cannons, do that a couple more times, kill some arbs, then maybe Veleza runs out of gold, even with the Portuguese. You see how the attack upgrades have made a little bit of a difference? Imagine if he had a few more Hussars, a few more attack upgrades, though. Still four cannons there. I'd like to see Veleza take this gold. Get a couple villagers there. You might eventually lose the round there, so you just need to take as much of it as you can, while you can. And Vinch has still got a micro against Bomber Cannons that are affected by Ballistics, and that's just not easy, man. Loses two cannons as he goes in to get some revenge here. Look at the consistent repairing from Veleza. That's so good. That's amazing. Are we close to Vinch tapping out here, guys? I think we are. All this game is missing is one more forward castle and Vinchester losing this area. If he loses this area, the game is over. And he's starting to lose it now. That's sick. Three cannons here. Feeling inferior. You know, like, come on, we cost the same. Why can why can we have that bonus? Yeah, and all the cannons are gonna go down. The castle will go up. This is over, man. But Vinchester should know he has his number one Civ ready for the seventh game. I like the fact that Veleza saved, like, took the easier option and went for Portuguese here because it puts more pressure on Vinchester that he could potentially throw, uh, you know, a 3-1 lead and lose the series you get this win whereas if you take the risky approach and go for japanese here and just lose then you know it's done and dusted actually they don't cost the same oh yeah that's true actually <laughs> that's what i get for trying to make a dumb joke vinchester's going to continue to fight trying to fit farms in every nook and cranny that he can but beleza just needs to take out this castle beleza realistically should make two trebs make two trebs and then your cannons just take out your opponent's cannons all the time or, I mean, Vinchester could also just resign because he has 30 army, but he's trying. It's a big fight. It's been a long series. I'm sure there's some exhaustion at play here as well. Is this the new dream series? Veleza and Vinchester? Because last year, man, it was the same scenario. Vinchester up 3-1, then it went to game 7, and then Vinchester ended up winning in that 7th game. Pikeman upgrade coming in for Veleza. I think this is, again, just play it safe mode. Make sure you have your trash techs just in case you do run out of gold. And Vinchester still holding. Does have a higher vil count. And KD has been pretty abysmal for him. It's that Arbalest ball that can chew up the Hussars, and then the cannons chew up everything else from behind. The cannons have 63 kills. Some of those are new cannons, too, and these light cav are going to go in and take out both the cannons from Vinchester. The only cannons he had remaining. Come on, dude. Make some trebs. I know the cannons are fun, but just make trebs. The trebs could sit back here. Like, the cannons have to sit awkwardly between the walls. I would really like to see trebs, but I don't think it matters. He'll kill these vills. Maybe feel like he should have denied this earlier, because that's been exposed for a while, but... Still fully denying expansion from Vinchester. Still able to mine gold. Fixing some eco. Adding some farms in his base. Whoa! hey oh, 17 Arbalest there. Okay. I don't know what these guys are here for. They didn't kill anything. That's kind of funny. That's also extremely rare at this level to see a player do that. Halb upgrades in. Maxing out on Blacksmith upgrades as well. And Vinchester is going to lose another cannon. That's like the 20th cannon he's lost this game. <laughs> you just chill here if you're Veleza. You know you've won. You just hope your opponent is... Like, I, I don't know exactly if there's any mental warfare at play here. <laughs> I 
it feels over to me having watched tens of thousands of games it i'm not seeing much of a win well no no you never let me take this back i'm actually being stupid you never resign if these relics are here ever the second you lose control of the relics then it's an instant gg but with five relics on arena when the gold could be running dry then you continue to play on with the five relics big engagement with the hussars Whew. Couple bomber cannons going down there, though. That's good for Vinchester. Velez is down to two cannons. That's something. Okay, it looks like the ARB group came forward now. Velez, it. I don't want to be rude, but if you don't make Trebs here, we can't be friends anymore. We just can't, all right? Make two Trebs. Make two trips 10 minutes ago and this game would be over already. You could push that castle, my friend. Okay. Good bomber cannon micro. Good stuff. Both players with two cannons on the field. Come on. Make some trips. You got it. Okay. Vinch has made a trip. Maybe that gives him the idea. Ooh, trips are cool. I forgot about the swing and wooden thing. How is Vinch at 180 pop, dude? C props to him. How is he not dead yet? He just sniped a cannon from Veleza. Holy crap. He still got gold income. So, somehow. He's getting crop rotation. <laughs> He's expecting this game to go on for a lot longer. Dang. All right. Veleza massing more cannons. Vinchester saving his cannons here. He's going to save all... No, he loses one of them. Les has got a massive ball of army, but he's just soaking up all the gold. Not really able to push with it. Vinchester has more cannons than Veleza. Maybe it's because it's late in the day. And, you know, there's a part of me that wants to move on to the next game and just get things moving on. I'm not sure, but I really felt like this game was over a long time ago. When you're fighting against relics here as Portuguese, maybe you think about making a Fatoria, but then it takes away population space from you, so I don't know. Another cannon goes down for Vinch. It's like an impossible scenario for him to push this back. It's what it feels like. But he's trying. And he's at a 200 population, despite not having any map control. And maybe he's got a chance. He's still able to take gold on that side. He's still got 1,200 gold in the bank. He's dodging, kind of, sort of, at times. Oh, we got a big shot there on the cannon from Veleza. Kills another cannon from Veleza. Getting some big shots with his cannons. It's the gold units for Veleza that matter here. How, how and light cap can happen all day. It's bomber cannon and arbs. And I'm looking at the arb numbers more than anything. Because the arb numbers are below 30 for the first time in a long time. But, I mean, he's going to queue more of them. Treb goes down, but Treb does get a retaliatory shot against the one cannon now that we have from Veleza. Pretty crazy stuff here. Oh, big, arp, big shot on the arps. I think you only add Fatorias if you start to lose your castles, though. I don't think... Like, you give Vinch away back into the game if you're fighting with less army suddenly. Oh, this is huge. Side raids as well could have been a possibility earlier. Just like running through here. It's not even walled. Yeah, that, that's the type of thing that maybe will open his eyes to that possibility too. Because I don't think he necessarily knows that's happening. Vinch does, so Vinch is going to rewall now. Yeah, it is interesting that Veleza isn't really throwing more at this. I agree with you. It looks like he's going to do that now. He's even bringing villagers over here. I mean, he's just playing super safe. That's all it is. Super safe. Doesn't want to take any risks here. Lesser players would have resigned in Vinci's situation. He's just going to castle this. Yeah, there's stone too. So even if you end up losing the castle, as long as you're mining the stone for a certain period of time, you'll be happy. But in the meanwhile, this is what happens when you shift. We now have 
a an attempt from Vinchester to take out the middle castle. Which is why Veleza didn't want to do that. Because now he could lose the middle castle. So things get interesting here. But I still think it's worth it because you have a commanding positional lead if you're Veleza. His cannons now are able to, to shift their attention over to the cannons from uh, Vinchester. And obviously the Trebs of Vinchester. And Vinchester should end up losing the right side and then losing the siege. And then I think he may consider tapping out. Not to mention the relics here. So Vinch waited for his moment to try. It doesn't have enough firepower though. His Trebs will go down. His cannon goes down. Surely he GG's now. We have a game seven. Dang. So it took a while. Right? Vinchester really fought on there. He could have just said, I have my number one Civ pick up next. Let's just tap out of this one and get it done. But he wanted to be sure. Heck of a series between these two. And Vinchester collected more res because he had a lot more food and wood, but he did not have the gold there. I, I think uh, Veleza figured something out in this game, and it was, let's just not go full Relic War. Let's just rely on the economy. Give me the early imp control. And it worked out for him. You can't like, you just really cannot do the same thing in the next game, right? I think, like, I'm in a position where I think you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, playing up against Malay in the next one. But let's see how Vinch takes advantage of it and see if I'm even right on that. Boom. We are here. Game number seven, guys. And as expected, it is the Malay, the number one Civ pick for Vinchester versus the Japanese, which is a bit more near the tail end of the draft for Veleza. Um, Vinchester had fantastic performances against Doubt in most of his games, but uh, the game with the Malay was just insane. I think it was even Malay Britons, which I put uh, in the upper echelon of civilizations. You have cheaper lumber camps, mills, mining camps, uh, yeah, whatever else with the Japanese, and that's some early game flexibility. But the Malay advanced faster to the next stage, uh, each and every age. That then means they spend less time researching. At H, which means they get back to creating villagers faster. Now, big thing I need to pick up on right now, as we don't have a house for Vinchester! Ah! He forgot a house! Oh, that's... Okay, at least he noticed ahead of time, so he's not super-duper uber-housed. But anyways, something Vinchester likes to do, uh, and did against Doubt, is he went fast feudal into a bunch of eco-upgrades into a fast castle. So I'm curious to see if he does that again. Uh, he could. I don't remember if he won four on wood when he did that last time. I'm just going to guess that he's not going to do that, and it's going to be more of a fast castle play, but we will find out soon. As for the maps, gold's pretty far forward for both. Uh, not the main gold for Veleza, but he does have one of the golds forward. This is fine. This is fine. It's not that big a deal. The maps rarely play a big role um, in, in these arena games here. Uh, the theme has been control, and it has been control when dealing with late cast, late early in pressure. And I do think the Japanese could potentially do something here, but we think a Japanese, they have good infantry, but infantry is typically countered by heavy archer play. They both have the same strengths as far as archers are concerned, but Malay can hit the timings because they're in the next stage faster to get the upgrades. And then if you look at the siege... Both are capped at Onager. Malay get Bomber Cannon. Japanese do not. Japanese do have really good traps, though. So, I guess Japanese Towers as well could be a factor at some point. Maybe. But I think for Vinch, it's just going to be Arbalest, Bomber Cannon, and that type of timing. But obviously, we could see players compete for Relics as well. Some people really wanted to see Vinchester pick Goths. You, you can't go Goths against Japanese, man. I guess it could have been Persians for Veleza, but... Yeah, people upset to not see Goths. So, um... I think you have to fight for map control in Castle Age as Veleza. While you might think the Japanese could get a lead in Eco and they just straight boom... And that could be true. I think giving the player who advances faster to the next stage full map to be able to pressure you is a bad idea. So you have to initially at least compete for some control in the middle. If anyone were to not go for any real competitiveness in the middle, it would be Malay. 
because if the roles are reversed and then pressure starts to come in, then it's like, boom, I'm faster imp than you and I take you, all your stuff down. You have kind of that, that speed to be able to bail you out. Now, if Valeza did his homework and saw how Vinchester played against Doubt, he probably would have saw that Vinchester went fast feudal with the Malay and Doubt lost his scout to Vinchester's scout. So you see how Valeza is scouting in his base right now? I think it's because he's worried that fast feudal will come in and the scout gets more attack and speed in feudal. So this is Valeza doing his homework for sure. Because otherwise he would be scouting more thoroughly in the middle. But Vinch is not going for the super fast feudal. He clicks up to feudal later than his opponent, so he's got 26 vils. Uh, and he will arrive to feudal age earlier than his opponent. And then he will click up to castle age. And then he will beat his opponent to castle age by quite a margin. T90 doesn't like spirit of the law. He's always saying how Japanese aren't the best if and throwing shade at the master of math. Okay. I like Spirit of the Law, okay? He's a good guy. We've cast it together, and I don't want any rumors about me not liking him, because then there's going to be some guy who reads it, and he's like, oh, that must be true. You know how the internet works, so stop. I just don't think Japanese are the best Civ in this matchup. That's just what I think. Endurance, I'm doing good, man. It's been a ridiculous series. Welcome to Game 7. Yeah, okay, so Velez is going to drop a stable... I watch you, he goes Stable Market again. He really likes that. Look at that wood. Yeah, Stable Market. I like it. And now that they're both in Feudal, he can consider moving out with his Scout soon. God, I think the, the worst part about it is that I acknowledge comments like that. Because then there's always one or two people that are like, Hey, that's funny. Let me do that again. <laughs> Straight boom for Vinch, guys. Straight boom for Vinch and look at the castle time. Sheesh. This is fast. So, again, here's the crazy thing. He will be in Castle Age faster than his opponent, able to drop town centers, etc. And he also has more vills. Like, right now he has more vills, and he's going to be back to creating vills soon. So the economy is just really hard to compete with when you're up against the melee, assuming the build orders are correct. Hmm. So Vinch is going to have to get value with his scouts. And for Veleza, he's going to hope to get the relics. If Vinch is able to kill a monk or two with this starting scout, that is just massive for him. And Vinch is just going to take a page out of Veleza's book in the previous game and just kind of focus on that boom. TC on stone, probably for a good castle timing later. Normally, what it evens out to is you have a six villager lead over your opponent simply by just advancing up through Feudal Age and Castle Age faster. But the fact that he's then going for the second town center faster as well means it'll probably be seven or eight. Potentially more. And maybe Veleza feels pressure there to, to like come forward then. And TC's going up. TC's going up. Does he see that TC? Oh, I wonder if he would get one more tile if he was right next to the wall. Can he get a little closer to the wall there? Okay, it seems like he's actually right on it. I think... Oh, 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 oh. He sees the TC. That is an invitation for you. That is a... I need to siege pressure that. Possibly. Maybe. But then you're under pressure because you're going to be behind in Vils and... Ah, it's so stressful. Mm. Yo, Wildwind, you found me because of the Spiffing Bread video? That's awesome. That's that's really cool to hear, actually. I haven't heard someone say that in a long time. I uh, actually had... had I made the script for that entire video. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, listen. I know you're probably a busy guy, but there's this cool stuff with the Age of Empires. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to record all the video for you. I'm going to... I'm going to record my audio for you, and I'm going to give you a script. You don't have to go off the script, but I think it would flow well together. He was like, sounds cool to me. I forgot about that video. I was really proud of myself. It was a couple years ago, you know, and Spiffing Brit's an awesome guy, big content creator. 
It was cool that we made that collab happen. All right, so Veleza sees the starting scout from Vinch. Three TCs from Vinchester. And he's got a considerable economy lead. It is three TCs for Veleza as well. And um, we, we don't have a monastery for Veleza. Wow. That's interesting. So he, he just says, no, I need the town centers first. Which I kind of like because you absolutely do. And you're still going to have control over the relics. And economy has proven to be the most important. I wonder, whoever wins this series, I wonder if we're going to see the change in approach in general for competing for relics in the final. Because to me, having watched it from the start, there's been a shift in thinking for both of them. Hmm. Scout's going to die for Vinch. Not something he would want. He might be able to save it. There's a slight chance, and he's adding a barracks. Now, this could be four, a couple spearmen, and then a forward castle. Now, I've been saying a lot of positive things about the Malay, but I will say it's extremely common for someone to go fast imp and then have, like, basically no resources. <laughs> and that's fine if you have 200 wood and 200 gold to make a trap and you have a forward castle, but... Uh, sometimes players are imp too fast. And it's like, oh no, I can't even make any army or upgrade any army yet. So in theory, you could argue it's a good t good civilization to go 4 TC boom with, but I like the 3 TCs. Let's look at resources collected here. He's collected like 700 more resources. But again, the big thing now is, is you just get to the next age faster. And he's going to take a page out of Velez's book in the previous game, and it looks like he's just going to go crossbow. Siege, crossbow. Remember seeing this before? We've seen it a lot. Stone mining coming in for Veleza. Planning for an eventual castle. He doesn't see any, excuse me, of these buildings. Just looking around with the scouts on patrol. Doesn't know if this TC is on gold or stone. I still would like to see a siege workshop in the middle. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to see him try and do more than just try and brace yourself for imp against the sieve that has Bombard Cannon, but we'll see. Finch is building up towards map control in the middle and a forward castle. He could just go for a castle here. I actually think that's underrated because you could deny your opponent's stone on the front in early imp and then build your next castle here. You don't have to have your castle be on the front. You could have it like a defensive castle, secures more gold and stone, and then push forward with greater army. He's going to go ballistics, most likely. Can that university be seen? Nope. Somehow. And Monk is just now getting the relics. Or monks are just now getting the relics. Now, what Vinch is doing is he's spending food and gold on map control. He's spending it on army, right? And Beleza notices this. He was on patrol, on attack stands, got hit. Noticed right when he got hit, though. And here comes the crossbowman, and here comes the spearman. And he's trying to use the scout to delay the crossbowman now. Here comes the villagers. And we're going to see an imp click from Vinchester any moment now. Veleza needs a defensive castle, and it all comes down to the Trebor, Bomber Cannons, and whatever else. Right now, for Veleza, his imp time is looking pretty tasty. Also, if he takes out the mango, he wouldn't mind it. Oh, the, the attack round from Vinchester, though. The Japanese don't get Bomber Cannon. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. As a Japanese enjoyer, it makes me very sad. But watch this. He's going to get imp, and he's not going to have the res right away for Trebs unless he uses the market, which is kind of funny. Oh, where do you drop your castle right now if you're Vin if you're Veleza? It's just such a rough matchup for Japanese. I don't know where you go with it. Vinch needs a few more on gold. 
He's just fixed that now. And good job from Valesa to get the relics. I would consider moving the relics into the back of my base. And the castle in the back of his base is also a sign that he's worried about a treb war. Good job from him to get the four relics, though. And he's dropping ranges, and he's going to try and go skirmishers against the archers, which is obviously a very good play. No forward siege workshop from Vinchester, so just the defensive one. And uh, Spearman gets converted. I don't really think Vinchester cares about this, but yeah. It's whatever. This guy attacks faster now. Actually, how does that work? Does it attack faster now that it's become Japanese from the Malay? There's the first Treb. No chemistry is shocking. What? You need chemistry, my friend. Chemistry all the way here. Now, Japanese have good monks. Japanese can convert the cannons. Chemistry is now coming in. Okay. False alarm. Where's the fifth relic? Is he moving them now? No? I love the double blacksmith move from Beleza. Okay. Vinchester damaging his own trebuchet casually next to a wall. So he now uses the attack rounds. We have a trebuchet here from Veleza. We have ranges in the middle. And we have barracks in the middle. And okay, there's the relic. Vinchester will end up getting one relic. Let's look at resources collected this game. It is close. But it is in favor of the Malay. And it is really the bombard cannons that make the difference now. And obviously the bit of map control that these players have, but... Vinchester doesn't know how many skirms Veleza has. And if he sees that, he's going to be a little worried. But what Veleza needs is he needs a second monastery for monk upgrades to convert cannons. I think that's your way back. He's clicked man-at-arms now. Ooh, that's a long road. But if you get there with Japanese... You get to champions, it could be really good. Like, Skirm champion against, what, Karambit Arbalest? Yeah. Okay, crossbowmen aren't upgraded to arbs yet. We have a fallback castle now for Vinch. Who is going to treb the monastery down. Cannons were a bit later than what Vinchester would have probably wanted. The pressure is on for both. We've got Bombard Cannons that could just smash these skirms and now block printing for Vleza. So Vleza's considering his options now on how to stop the cannons and wants to go for monks. Also could just sacrifice skirmisher numbers. Not a bad idea. He's got a lot of them, but I mean, you got Castle Fire to deal with. There's also Karambits in that castle. Get ready for a surprise here. Not supplies, but a surprise. Oh, uh, Redemption must have already been in. Oh, man. Tanganel's gonna be converted. No. Monastery doesn't have the relics anymore. Here come the Karambit Warriors. Here we go. There's 19 of them. These things are not elite. But they have full armor because Malay recently got changed. To get full armor upgrades. To get their armor for free in each age. Look at Finchester snipe the monks. At least initially he sniped the monks, so his cannons could do the rest. Karambits are doing enough. Castle needs to be repaired. Bombard cannons need to take the trebs, and it's all over for Veleza. The Malay are so good with their timings. They've got so many options, and the Japanese, if they had time, would maybe be able to compete. But a massive vil lead for Vinchester. The Karambit edition was perfect. And everything falls apart for Veleza here, which is disappointing. But it brings me all the way back to that one win from Vinchester where he won with the Tatars against the Malians. Because he went 3-1 up. And I did the math. We looked at the civilizations and we just basically said, okay, ca Capture Age is biased. Capture Age doesn't want me to give Vinchester the win. There we go. Uh, we just kind of said that there was going to be one game where if two players who played so evenly were to be facing off that it would probably lead to Vinchester getting a 4-3 victory. It was an amazing series. It was an amazing job from Vinchester. He moves on to the finals against Tato. And I feel bad for Veleza, but it was, it was a slog, man. And 
both players definitely evolved throughout the series in terms of how they prioritized the relics and whatnot. I think Veleza did everything that he could have done here. Everything that he could have done, I think he did. I think the only small thing, and I don't know if he could afford it, is a small combination of a uh, crossbowman with the skirms. Maybe makes it a bit easier to combat the karambits. But remember, a lot of pro players were really upset with the devs when, like, two patches ago, they decided to give Malay the infantry armor upgrades for free in each age. If you had to research the armor upgrades there, this wouldn't have happened. Not yet. It would have given Veleza more time. But the fact that the armor upgrades, which are super expensive, were already in for free, and Vinch could just quickly mix in a couple regular Karambits to turn the tide of that fight, made a big difference. It was a brilliant series, though. And uh, again, Vinchester wins with the Malay, which he's now picked first in two series, I think. So, um, I, and I, honestly, coming in today, I, I didn't have, like, clear favorites, right? I, I didn't have, um, I, I want to see the best player win, but from an entertainment standpoint, I think that Vinchester and Tato is going to be the best final. Masters of Arena 7 final is going to be incredible. So I hope my casting did it justice today. Um, it was a great back and forth series. I hope everyone out there enjoyed on the streams and also on YouTube. Uh, I try my best to break down the civilizations. I try my best to, um, you know, it, it kind of explain the thought process from the players and how things play out. Far from perfect always, but did my best. So, had a good time.